Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to the Archcast yet again. But I am rejoined by Dev this week. Look at him. Hello, I'm back. You thought that I was leaving forever, eh? You fucks. <laughs> As we've so got, uh, we've see, we've got topics today where Dev, even Dev, could not possibly be wrong. I'm sure. I'll, actually, I don't know. Like, the first topic is the DHS. So, Dev, are you going to come out pro state on this one? <laughs> listen, listen. When the state is right about something, you should be pro state. That's just how it is, man. I see. Yeah. I see. So, Arch, real quick. Did, did you miss me last week? Well, it was nice having a break from your communism and having RGE on, you know? He's uh, far more uh, black-pilled on these things than you are. It's nice to have a reality check every now and then. <laughs> it's nice to completely lose all hope. Just, just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know how that's nice at all. I don't know. It's good Heresy to get brought question. back down to the ground Fire occasionally. The We've been winning a bit too much recently, honestly, with the whole Game of Gear 2.0 thing. Also, unironically, the... Uh... I, I actually think, Arch, that your chat, at least, okay, let's say the most extreme portions of your chat are unironically more communist than I am. I don't know if that's even possible. Oh, it's actually very easy. It's very easy. So here, here, all right? Here, here's, here's how it goes. Let me, let me explain it to you guys, okay? Let me explain how this, this sort of thing actually works, okay? So... Arch, we're, we're, here. You know what? I know you, you, have, you have a full, you have a full course meal planned for us today. But give me, give me two minutes to actually talk about this, okay? Does that sound good. A, let me find a Devian speaks picture. <laughs> a Devian speaks picture. There you go. On. Okay. Okay. So just, just listen real quick. Arch, what, what do you, what do you know about, about your good friend Klaus Schwab and the WEF? Tell me about it. Klaus Schwab is basically the dude from uh, Demolition Man. <laughs> oh yeah, like the very effet kind of. Yes, I will. I will. I will micromanage the whole world to yep. be a utopia. Uh, where's yeah, a uh, a fucking Yukata? <laughs> where's a Yukata? That's right. He does. He does. <laughs> he unironically actually does. Yes. Um, <laughs> what the fuck was his name? I don't remember it to be honest. But yes, that I bad man from it. Demolition Man, that's basically Klaus Schwab. That's basically... You know, you, you know what? I hadn't actually thought of it quite in in that way, but it re he really is, isn't he? Yeah, it? no, I, he, I'm he right really on this. I, I really actually is. Like, full-on <laughs> social engineering, effeminate nonsense, everything will be within mind, mind government. Right, right. Well, when you look at the kind of thing that uh, the, the kind of stuff that 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 that, that the right wingers say that Klaus Schwab and the WEF want, it's the whole you know you will live in the pod and you will eat the boogs and no one will own anything and you're all going to be happy and you know basically the conversion of our current middle class into this landless surf class that just engages in in like intergenerational. Um, like inter intergenerational borrowing where they never, they always owe the ruling class money so they can never actually get ahead and they never actually earn enough money to, to get out of debt. So like basically like, like neo-feudalism, right? That's basically what, what the W, what the, the right thinks the W, the WEF is up to. That sounds about correct. Do you think you should live in the pod and be happy? Yeah. Yeah. The, the issue ultimately is that that, that is just a communist analysis with different words. Because the, the, like the socialists say the same thing, right? They say that the ruling class, they call them the bourgeois, but basically that they're going to use the exact same tactics against the proletariat. And, and it's, it's all, it's all going to be about keeping them down and keeping them, uh, basically keeping them compliant, but also keeping them poor. And, and also keeping them without ownership. So what you have is you like whenever I see a right winger, you know, spout off about about the new world order and the WF and all this fucking nonsense, they're making a socialist analysis. They're just not using so the same words. 
Dev has discovered that there are two flavors of socialism, international and national. <laughs> yes, but the, the, the point is, though, is that it, the, um, the, the point is that the dissident right is much more communist than me. I am, in fact, not a communist at all. You keep saying this, and yet we have a video so clip of you admitting to it, Dev. <laughs> you mean during the D&D &D campaign mm -hmm. where it was a joke? I've got it on the soundboard now. <laughs> Shit. I am a communist, <laughs> after all. I can play it as much as is required. <laughs> but no, is that going to be... Is, is that going to be, be like a dono sound, or is something you can press a button to play? I've, I'm just pressing a button to play it. <laughs> See, look, 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 look at one, one guy in the chat. It's the Jews, <laughs> not the WEF. Okay, listen, listen. Uh, okay, listen, funny man who says it's the Jews <laughs> and not the WEF. Do you, okay, do you know why, aside from just, you know, irrational racial hatred, do you know why the early National Socialists hated the Jews? It's because they didn't have a nation. And so they would parasitize, in their view, themselves onto other nations and extract from them the same way that the communists claim the bourgeois does. Imagine that. The, 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 there's a very strong link between these ideologies. Well, yes. And uh, ironically, so it's socialism. Right wing socialism and left wing socialism has a great deal of overlap. Yes. And uh, this is also why I am not an extreme right winger nor an extreme left winger, because both sides are communist, in my opinion. <laughs> Based. Yep. To, you go in to be fair, like, to be fair, you know, when I, when I went on the reading arc post Scrump, I wanted to see what, what kind of stuff he had radicalized himself with, and so I start going through some of the things he he uh, he publicly said he read, and he, he outright says this is right wing socialism, socialism, and I'm like, oh well, okay then, that's what it is. It's, it's right-wing socialism. Sure. Okay. I understand. I, I get where he's going. This will actually lead nicely into a uh, the second topic of the day, where we'll yell at Matt Walsh for being... I don't know. Like, you did a whole video on the definition of grifter. Would you think the term applies here? Yeah, I think so. I think... I think I don't think that Matt Walsh is a, is a positive actor for any movement. You know, he he does seem to be in it primarily just to make money. He he probably does believe in some things. Like I I do think he's actually religious, for example. But I, for example, his uh his ad his attitude towards video games seems to just like bend depending on which way the wind is blowing. Change with the wind, yeah. We'll get yeah. more into that because I think that is a very important uh, thing to talk about, particularly in these trying times. But first. The Department of Homeland Security. Dev, please give me the pro-state position of why the government should be looking for extremists in video games. <laughs> there is none, because this is bullshit as far as I understand. Well, I'm sure there are some. Like, here's the thing. Video gaming now is the single largest form of entertainment that exists, so there they're gonna be some crazies. I mean, you remember the the PewDiePie shooter for from like what, two, oh, three yeah, years yeah. ago now? Yep. Oh no, that was Christchurch, right? That was yes. wasn't that five years ago. Was it, has, it been, has it been that long? Christchurch shooter. Let's see. Uh, March fifteenth, two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, wow, it's five years. Jesus, yeah. time flies. It's been a goddamn while. Because yes, um, the Christchurch shooter. I because I remember I did a video on this. Where I basically said, like, everyone, shut the fuck up. Like, we don't know what's happening, because it caused a whole wave of, like, gamers evil, gamers evil, arr! You know? And on the other side, they're like, ah, we must clam up now. They're attacking us. And so I just did a video, going, like, everybody needs to calm the fuck down. We need to figure out why he did this. Don't read the meme he posted and be like, uh -huh, I understand now. <laughs> and I remember a, a fucking reporter from Vice reached out to me on my old Twitter account. I was like, so would you like to comment on this? And I was just like, yeah, uh, I don't think either side should bring politics into this. And he tried for like three days to get me to say something opposing to that. He was desperately fishing for just anything he could misconstrue. <laughs> And I didn't. Man I managed to not give him anything because they didn't write anything about it. I did get him to admit, though, that they would literally. And this is the thing: um, I've been contacted with a few journalists over the years, and one of them I asked because he was covering 40k in I think that was Vice too, 
Um, because he was talking about how women in 40k didn't get enough attention for their painting. And then I reached out to the women he contacted and asked, like, hey, uh, did you know he wrote this as if, like, <laughs> you're marginalizing the community? And they're like, no, Heresy no, we, we never said that. What Fire the fuck? Fire is the answer. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's how it happens. Well, here's the thing. It's not necessarily a political partisan thing, right? Because it's sometimes it's just, like, a, a length issue so for example i did a video on that whole ridiculous uh willy wonka thing that happened like last week or two weeks ago right uh -huh. and the actor that played uh that played willy wonka he gave like a five minute or a ten minute uh, interview to the to tv so some 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 news organization i forget which one it was some news organization he gave this five or ten minute interview about what happened and when they ran their piece, they only used one sentence of his from that five to ten minute interview. And it was him scratching the back of his oh, head saying, well, I feel like an answer. idiot. <laughs> yes. And that's all they used. <laughs> and it's like, but here's the thing. Their spot, th th their news story was like two minutes long, you know? They had, they had a, so it's not like they could use the whole interview. So on, sometimes you just, you just need to like you know, use what, use what you have. Guarantee you know? citizenship. There, um, there was an even more blatant example, though, because, um, oh, God, this was years and years ago. I don't know if you uh, if you recall this. Um, what was that dumbass show with um, that that guy, the late night dude who uh, pretends to be like a news anchor? Um, oh, are you talking um, Jon Stewart, Daily Show? Uh, yes, Daily Show uh, mm -hmm. about women's football. They had a thing there where they took a guy's interview and he, he explained, like, okay, so they asked him, why don't you think that uh, women players earn as much as male players? And he explained for like five minutes, okay, these are the, these are the statistics over how many people are watching, uh, these are the ad revenue statistics, etc. Basically laying out the simple fact that they don't earn as much money because there just isn't as much money in women's football, right? Yep. And they cut out all of that and they got one piece of him going well they're just not as physically competitive as men which was like a 10 second clip out of a five minute response and they plastered <laughs> I mean, it's still it true. Everywhere. yeah it's, it's still, still true, true but this was this was like 2015 16 so the dude was blown up for this and he posted the entire interview <laughs> and it made the daily show look really fucking bad <laughs> oh man but this is, this is, of course, entirely common in this, because they will misconstrue something. And the thing is here, I don't have your unyielding faith in the state, Dad. Mm -hmm. and so, you think I have unyielding faith in the state, Arch? Absolutely. And so the DHS goes, we're looking for terrorists in gaming. I know they're going to find something, even if there is nothing to find. <laughs> Wait, hold on a minute. You think I'm a communist. Communists revolt against the state. They don't have faith in it. And communists create the state. It's just the communist state. Look at Stalin. So here, I know that you posted the uh, the MSN article, right? Department of Homeland Security is scour scouring gaming communities for extremist content. Um, is this happening in, in, let's say, in direct response to the Sweet Baby stuff and how that's blown up? Or is this its own thing? Um, this is in more or less direct response, because what started this was a um, larger like think tank piece on why these governmental entities needed to start looking into extremism and gaming. Uh, now, they've always been doing this, by the way. This has been so going on for a very long time. The DHS and the FBI has, have never actually stopped looking at gaming since like 10 years ago. Uh, but they are now being yeah, urged yeah. on to do so more proactively and to share each other's tools and methods. Uh, basically, they're asking for there to be a, like a forensic database built up around extremism and gaming, probably because they're not finding that much. So they're like, God damn, we've got to pull our resources here. We've got to find something. So I recall something that Sargon dug up during Gamergate where he found the... Uh... He, he found some sort of link to, to something happening in the American government, but he didn't go down the rabbit hole. Do you remember that? I think I do. It's been a while. Yeah, what the fuck was it called? Man, I don't remember. This, this was a big thing. It, it, hold on. It was... 
It it was a Oh no, here it I found it. okay. Yeah, DARPA funding the Digital Games Research Association. What the fuck was DARPA? DARPA. Uh name rings a bell. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Oh, it's the, United it's the States um, Department of Defense responsible for the uh, emerging technologies used by the military. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. the uh, the anti social media governments basically that looks into like if social media can be abused. Right. Yeah. So here I found this. This is from ten years ago. An article from The Verge, Sir, ten the years ago, citizen. October sixth, twenty fourteen, and this article basically asks, uh, "What's happening in Gamergate?" This is a, this is a little bit after Gamergate had already taken off, and you can see that there's a conspiracy about DARPA funding the Digital Games Research Association (DIGRA). And Zoe Quinn to make games that brainwash people. <laughs> that was one. Of, what that was one of those like Gamergate loose threads that people discovered but didn't pull on back in the day. Yeah. I mean, there there was heresies. The question. There was so the <laughs> much stuff. Um. Oh God, can I even find it? I remember like one of the articles, like video games are harming children, and there was a big picture of a little child, Heresy like crying, the uh, whilst playing video games, and the the subtext was like, "This child has been not he he hasn't been blinking for like three minutes playing video games." Like, what the fuck is this Clockwork Orange shit? <laughs> it's like children just forget to blink and their eyes dry out. Like, God help me. There was a whole massive push around this. And this has been, again, this has been, like, pre-Gamergate, right? We can go back to fucking Ambulance Chaser. Um, oh, God, what was his name? You know the guy. Monday, Matt? No, 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 no. Mother... <laughs> he was an Ambulance Chaser. chaser. Is, was he? Yeah. Um, no, no, I'm talking about the, the lawyer. The lawyer guy. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, the, the one Gamergate lawyer. What was his name? Uh, oh no, he predated Gamergate. Leonard French? Talk about him? No, no, no. I'm talking about like the beginning of this. That that guy who claimed that uh, violent video games was responsible for everything. Oh, Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson. Thank you. Because the thing is, there is always going to be opposition to popular Here's things, like because this was the Fire same with the with music. <laughs> uh, it was the same with like rock music. Same with D and D, etc. And it was the same with gaming. And in essence, it is just... This is the rolling kind of opposition to video games from whatever is in the establishment at the time, in my opinion. Uh, the old school establishment, conservative Christianity, looked at video games, didn't like it. And uh, now that we've replaced those with left-wing extremism, they're looking at video gaming and thinking, we don't like it. Why? Because this is not real life. This is a deviation from their point of view. It's a world in which you can indulge in any fantasy whatsoever, be it violent, be it pornographic, be it adventurous, be it Pokemon. This always is going to have an opposition from the established power structure because it is not it. This seems to be literally unavoidable i bet you we can go back to fucking like greek times and go like all oh, these sports things are harming the youths i mean that's part of it I, I i do know that protestantism tends to have a very uh, a stronger than average reaction to the idea of entertainment because there's something in the in the, in the whole protestant work ethic that is like well listen you should be using your labor to glorify god and if you're not what are you doing with yourself that's kind. Of, that's kind of like a Protestant attitude, you know. Well, I'm playing black and white and glorifying God via that. Via that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> hold on. Fire I decided to, to do a little bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm going to die here. <laughs> okay. So, I found this. All right. This this was published from your ally. A, a plea to gamergators to drop the Digra connection and some to Sargon and Jenny. So, basically, this was happening. This this was published when everyone was digging up the DARPA Digra shit, and it it like the the actual connection didn't really go anywhere because what happened was like the Silver String people that I investigated, you know Maya Kramer, who is now Felix because they transitioned, they like that 
the the, the COO of, of Silver String Media was at like a Digra conference, and Digra apparently received some funding from DARPA because DARPA just shovels money everywhere it fucking can because it's it's one of those type of organizations that just funds everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they were like, "Oh my god, guys." Video games are being funded by the government, and they're going to hypnotize you. And it's like, no, no, they're not. I honestly, I, looking back on it, I think that for the, the first couple months of GamerGate, they were they were marred by a lot of conspiratorialism on the pro GamerGate side, just because some of those conspiracies ended up being true. So, like, as soon as you start getting some conspiracies are true, you're like, oh man, you see them everywhere now. Oh, everything is conspiracy. It's like, well, no, not all of them are going to be true, right? Service but that's what happened. So I think that's why 10 years ago, everyone was like connecting, like they're connecting, you know, video games being like to the, to the government. But that was 10 years ago. And now, Arch, you have this article, the Department of Homeland Security is, is scouring gaming. And also a, a related thing is happening here in Canada. I'll just post this as well in the, in the, uh, the stream room where... The government of Canada has, has announced funding to study potential for radicalization to violence across gaming platforms. So I don't know what the detail was 10 years ago, but it does seem to be the case that right now uh, governments are looking at video games and saying, oh, are people getting radicalized on here? Oh, yeah. Like this is uh, this has been going on for a long time. Let's see. Uh... I mean, this one isn't even that old. This is from 2021. Extremists using video game chats to spread hate. Uh, there's countless What's articles the on how is the far just, right memes? uses gaming. Yeah, yeah. I see it all the time. You, you know, your sons and daughters are being recruited in Discord and on voice calls for video yes. games. I've seen that so many fucking times. It's like, okay, dude. And the thing is... um. To go back to the whole conspiracy theory thing at the beginning of Gamergate, right? Because we are seeing this now as well with Gamergate 2.0. Like, initially, we saw Sweet Baby Inc. And then people went like, okay, these people are trying to affect gaming. And a lot of us, myself included, was just like, eh, I don't really care. It's like, what, a consultant company is affecting video games? This is old news. We know this, that our entire organization advertising these services... You can literally Google, like, DEI um, uh, consultant services, and you'll find, like, dozens and dozens of corporations. But then it caught the attention of the normies, and it grew into a big thing. And now it's like, okay, now it's a tool worth using. And then it spawned Gamergate 2.0, essentially via all of the people looking at the popularity of it and beginning to try and use it for their own means. Because that's where the conspiracy theories come from, right? You see one person who digs up a thing, and you see it blow up. And then everyone else goes like, oh, I want some of that. And then they start digging into it, and then trying to find something to blow up. And this is a good thing, in that it lets us often tug on uh, strings that turn out to be true, but it can also be a negative thing, in that sometimes you get the retarded stuff. Like, um, because there's been a handful of extremist crazy people who is like, oh, they're funded by BlackRock and Klaus Schwab. As like, no, we can't prove that. It's it's retarded. And now you're just giving the mainstream media ammunition by going, look at these crazy people thinking that Klaus Schwab is funding woke video games. Like, yeah, well, kind of, but not in that way. You know? I do think I know what you mean. And actually, you know what? You know what, Arch? I think you actually just made my point that I made at the start of the uh, of the stream. Oh, yeah. That that this whole uh, okay. So chat. Here, you, you, wait. Do I, do I have access to make polls in your chat room? Oh, I don't. Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Chat. So, I know that there's there's a bunch of people on the right wing who are talking online right now about the uh, you know the 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 many tentacled beast that is BlackRock and, and Vanguard and State Street and all of these big investment funds that are apparently like causing the downfall of the West. Okay. Heresy is that is that something that you guys believe, chat? Yes or no? <laughs> just real quick. Let's see let's see what they say. I'm just gonna slurp some water real quick while we wait for can the, you uh... can you boil that down into a question I can put as a poll? <laughs> BlackRock, Vanguard, Slate State Street, other um other investment groups are causing a lot, are like the, the conspiracy of those groups causing a lot of our problems. Yes or no? Right. 
I'll put that in a simple Polish thing. And see, I think, yes, yeah, they are. But not because of themselves. Uh, BlackRock, etc. are investment firms. They try to maximize their profits. And they are far beyond like your average investment firm, right? Because here's the difference. A basic investment firm might look at a thing that's happening and go, okay, there's going to be an increased uh, use for beans, right? Because a famine is on the horizon. And so they're going to start buying beans. That's the regular investment firm. It might have millions and millions of dollars, but it can only really react to changing circumstances. Something like BlackRock with $14 trillion? They don't react to changing circumstances. They go out of their way to create changing circumstances. Like, they are on the level where they will actually try to create societal situations that will benefit their long-term investments. And stuff like ESG was absolutely one of those things, where they figured that this was a thing that would get us more money via investment, because the long-term argument of ESG is eventually we're going to run into situations with global warming, with changing environments, and uh, the, people, the fact that people did actually say that they wanted corporations to be moral entities, right? So we are going to get ahead of the curve, and we're going to start establishing the ESG brand. We are going to be the premier leaders in this. We are going to get all the investment money for it. And we are going to dominate this market by essentially going, we think this is going to be a market, and we are now going to try our darnest to literally create this market. So are they causing the problems in many cases? I think yes, in large parts. But are they doing so out of just pure malice? Less malice, more far too fucking much money and far too few hands greed. That's my interpretation. Long winded. So yeah, people in the chat. People see people in the chat are mostly agreeing. They're all saying yeah, like the, the polls at ninety two percent yes, right? Like yes, yes, of course they are. Dev, Dev, you're ridiculous. One person says that I'm saying BlackRock did nothing wrong. Dev, twenty twenty four. I'm not saying that, guys. By the way, I'm I'm not saying that Black that BlackRock hasn't done anything wrong. All right, I understand the problem. Here's the issue, though, guys. Question. All right, Fiery all of answer. you guys <laughs> who are pinning this on BlackRock and Vanguard and etc. How is your analysis different from the socialist one? How is it different from the leftist one? Oh, you're, we're... you're both sh you, seriously. You're both <laughs> shaking your fist at big corporations. You're both you're both saying that capital <laughs> is the problem. What's the difference, guys? Well, I would say that the difference is the political motivation of the capital in this case. How do you mean? Um, because this is essentially a corporation so like th this this is the church right in the 1500s it's an organization with such vast monetary power that it can literally influence society at large and it has chosen to attempt to influence society at large in a political direction and that is objectionable to me if they were doing this for purely capitalist gains and nothing else i'd probably be like eh meh but since they're doing it in a way that it is in part for capitalist gains, but is explicitly political in their attempt to do so, now I object on a political basis. Well, sure, but I mean, a, a lot of what the socialists talk about isn't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't leave out the idea that capitalists also have a political motive, right? This, this, is, this is what I'm pointing out here. I, listen, chat, chat. I'm not even saying if you're right or wrong or if oh, Arch question. is right or wrong. Fire okay, I'm not saying answer. that. <laughs> I'm simply saying you think the same way the socialists do. You hate the left, but you guys are using a leftist analysis. You just don't know it. All right? I like, think uh, we're which, using more of a political analysis like, rather than the left-wing one. Well, what, what, what's the difference, really? Well, the difference is you're ascribing a position to it, whereas I'm simply saying we're just using a set of tools to identify the problem. And if the problem happens to be corporations, then we can still criticize them without it being a left-wing position. Oh, sure, sure. There's definitely, like, a, a right-wing way to criticize corporations. It's called right-wing socialism. I don't agree with the idea of calling <laughs> it socialism, though. <laughs> 
I, I no, think I'm, we're, we're... I'm, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. But no, but no. The, the point, the point is though, and this is like this is why I think the chat is just fucking going wild right now and seething. It's it's because <laughs> like okay, I you know I sat down and I watched I watched like a Sargon segment and then I watched a Vosh segment. And they said the exact same fucking thing with different words, and then they blamed each other for the problem they were fingering. And I'm like, this is Paris kind of incredible to question. see sometimes. Fire you know what I mean? Where like, you know, the, the conservative talks about family and communities and how big business comes in and destroys them, and 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 you know how like traditional family bonds are eroded by people who who care nothing about the local culture and only chase money. And then you get like a communist who will say, well, you know, our local community is being destroyed by the fat cat capitalist with, with his capitalist interest, where he and he and he 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 destroys you know the poor working class, like the same people are way more alike than they are different in the end. Sure, but just because two sides can identify the same problem doesn't mean that they're the same thing, depending upon their solutions, their point of view of it. And there's also a great deal of nuance within that interpretation as well, as the left-wing view would be that they would always do this. It would, it would be inevitable, I presume, that the capitalists would destroy society and communities. Whereas I don't think that's inevitable. And neither do I, to be honest. Neither do I. <laughs> Artemis says in a super chat, Dev, you breathe air. You know who else breathes air? The socialists. You do the exact same things the socialists do. Okay, so fair enough. So I'm actually kind of curious. Like, what is the difference between the socialist analysis of things and what the chat seems to want? I wonder if anyone can chat in, in, chat, in chat can actually lay that out. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, see, I, I see lots of insults, but I don't see anything actually with with any meat on the bone here. <laughs> you know what I want? I want white socialism. Yeah, okay. For, for, here, funny man in the chat has already said he's like a third positionist. It's like, I get, I know what you mean, dude. I get it. <laughs> he wants white socialism. Maybe socialism is the solution. Just the correct type of socialism. The correct type of socialism. <laughs> Hell, I mean, I don't even necessarily agree with that position entirely, because there are elements of every political position that can be useful. Like, being a Norwegian, for example, we nationalized our, um, our oil resources, right? Obviously a socialist position, question. right? Fire is the mm -hmm. answer. But it has also unquestionably benefited Norway and its populace tremendously. So I was like, yep. okay, at the end of the day, that was probably good. But we are, we are probably getting a little bit too uh, two-sided a political Fire compass here, answer. where it's either left or right. Nuance, Dev. Nuance. <laughs> oh. Well, the the honest truth is that it... it oh, God. I, okay, but it, I can't it, put that up. It, but I'll it, put see, it in link channel so Dev Fire can see is it. the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, what's actually happening here is it seems to be like center versus extreme right now. Where 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 the extreme left and the stream extreme right have more in common than with let's say you know the current liberal world order? Probably, and I I think this is honestly unavoidable uh, because this is how the pendulum swings, where we are always going to be torn between two extremes, and it's going to be very difficult to avoid that because right now with the simple. falling political dominance of the left obviously the people on the right are going to see an opportunity and they're going to move in and go like look at them they fucked everything up look at them here's my solutions they're the opposite Here's of theirs because now the again answer. all politics all <laughs> politics i've come to the conclusion is the two percent arguing over the attention of the 98 percent who just want to grill yeah yeah it does seem to be the case yeah I know. So Artemis actually, of all the people in the chat, Artemis actually makes like kind of a point here. Normal people want the market to cater to the demands of society, while socialists want to destroy the market and dictate the demands of society themselves. That's probably true, but that's not a position that's unique to the left wing. All right. I have seen many right wingers suddenly go very anti-market as soon as it serves them, which is which is what we'll get into with Matt Walsh in a little bit. But like there are so many right winger. Oh, oh God, the, the the right wing objection to, to pornography. There's clearly market demand to, for porn. You can't deny that, right? And how many right wingers are like, fuck the free market, fuck capitalism, fuck individual liberty. We got to ban porn. I see it all the time. All right. So this is not a position that is unique to left wingers, Artemis. 
And in fact, we will kind of, as you mentioned, mention that on Max Wolf 2. And yeah, BlackRock is causing all of our problems, says chat, 92%. I mean, that's very, <laughs> very <laughs> conclusive. <laughs> There's actually here's the thing. There's actually like like a decent argument that BlackRock is in fact a socialist entity, but I'm not sure anyone in the no, no one in the chat has Paris brought it up yet. I've been waiting to see if someone Fire would. Is the answer. <laughs> but I haven't seen it yet. I've seen a lot of bad arguments for it, but not not, not the good one. R.I.P. Well, on the 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 topic of wrapping up the uh, government intervention thingy. We barely got into it. Hold on. Here, pull up that, uh, that, that, uh, the one that I linked, the, the Canadian one. Do you have it? Yep. I, I'm sure I linked it. Yeah. So basically, see, this seems so to be actually in response to, um, to the Sweet Baby thing. And the reason why is because Sweet Baby is a Canadian company, right? A lot of these people live in Canada. Uh, Silverstream Media was a Canadian company. Can Canadians seem to be disproportionately involved in this fucking nonsense right now. <laughs> Um, and also, the current ruling class in Canada is way more terminally online than the current ruling class of America, with the possible exception of Trump, because Trump seems to live on the fucking internet as well. But, like, there are so many... Oh, my God. Canada's become a nightmare. I don't know if you've noticed in the past few years, Arch. I, man, I saw... There was an instance where, like, a, a woman was raped, and the when the, the case was appealed to a higher court... The judge in the higher court admonished the judge in the lower court for using the word woman instead of saying person with vagina in the court file. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what the actual fuck is wrong? Like, you know, you you wouldn't really see that in, a, in an American court. You, you're seeing that in a Canadian court. Because Canada, is, all, all of the right-wing stereotypes about, about the establishment in America that just aren't true, they're actually coming true up here. And it's fucking terrifying. But what's happening here is we have, like, this is probably in direct reaction to the Sweet Baby thing. So they're going to put down a whole, what was it, $317,000, which is not that much, to be honest, but it's still, like, still a fair amount of money. So and they're going to start, um, look, they're going to partner, they're going to partner up with the Extremism and Gaming Research Network. So they're just going to be, they're just going to start looking into video games. It's like, oh, we got to, we got to find the right wing extremism in video games. Service guarantees citizenship. <sighs> it's. It's annoying, isn't it, to see this stuff happening? Well, the thing is, they, this is politically motivated, near entirely, because uh, we are the rebellious class. Like, gamers uh, gamers and people who enjoy the current popular entertainment is always viewed as the rebellious class against the people who are in power. That's why the government is getting involved in this. That is why the government is being urged to create think tanks and combine databases on this. And... The thing is, they can absolutely prove some of their points simply due to the volume of what they're studying. Like, this is like going like, uh, are, are there fish in the water with weird mutations? It's like, well, it's pretty rare, but, you know, there's five or five billion fish, so yeah. <laughs> because they can absolutely go like, okay, by our definition of misogyny, you can connect violent extremist ideologies across geography. Because it's true. Absolutely. By the definition of a Canadian fucking minister, what goes on in the average Discord chat room probably seems like terrorism. Yep. And this is all to create ammunition. Like, this has been going on for decades. In fact, again, we'll get back to that on um, Wal Matt Walsh thing, but the argument that gaming creates violence, for example, is an argument that has continuously been running for the last, like, 20, 30 years. It is all in an, a, a desperate attempt to find some stick with which they can beat gamers with. The problem is that they ha they are completely unable to find any actual thread to pull on here, right? Because normally in extremist environments, there is some sort of solid core. Like you have um, a fundamental idea. In right-wing extremism, it's of course going to be the right-wingism. In Islam, it's going to be Islamism, etc., etc. And there's going to be a dozen variations on this, but you can always identify Service some communality. But in gaming, what the fuck is the communality? I like electronic entertainment. Like, so, this is literally the you enjoy drinking water thing. Do you guys feel like pulling on a thread? There's a thread to pull on. Arch, in that Canadian, Canada.ca 
uh, news release. Mm-hmm. It says that the Royal United Service Institute for Defense and Security Studies is partnering with the Extremism and Gaming Research Network. So I'll let's pull on the thread here, okay? Here's the members of that organization, the Extremism and, and Gaming Network, okay? R- R- sorry, Extremism and Gaming Research Network. And you'll see, like, Galen Lamphere Ungund, uh, Jessica White, and these are people at the, at the top, right? And these all seem to be people who don't really have much um, much video games background. Rather, they have anti-terrorist background, okay? If you look at this list. Yep, I'm um, seeing it. And a quick search of these people shows that they actually gave a conference on this a few months ago. And here I'll... If you want to see what those people look like, you can just go about five seconds into this video. There they are. <laughs> it looks appropriately soy for the conversation, right? <laughs> but you're like, you don't have to watch all 15 or 16 minutes of this video, though. It's probably worth watching at some point if people want to go down a deep dive on this. But I mean, Service there's uh, the first citizen. slide they talk about is just how big gaming is because it is the most popular um, form of entertainment in the world. You've said that several times, Arch. That is the case. As you jump to the their second slide, which is like four and a half minutes in, they say harms are increasing coming out of gaming. All right. Exposure to white supremacist ideology is on the rise among gamers. Uh-huh. And harassment is increasing it within the gaming community. You know, 15% of young people, people who are 10 to 17 years old, reported exposure to white supremacy in 2022. So they they're kind of they're kind of like building a narrative here of just yeah. how um you know the next the next slide across a variety of ideologies look at all, look at all these ideologies yep where where apparently things are going up people are getting exposed to it right they're like presenting these numbers they they're building a narrative here of why is it that their organization is important well yeah. because they're looking into gaming and they're discovering look at look at look at what these nasty gamers believe yep and now they're partnering with with governments it's like oh i see I, we, we can see where, where we're going with all this right oh yeah like this is uh this is literally the v in argument these people exist because there's three hundred seventeen thousand dollars from the government on the line yep yep and so there's uh the, the, the typology of harms like a lot, I'm sure there's probably something here, but they also seem to be just ba- basically making a mountain out of a molehill. And by the way, there's no way they're going to be investigating socialist extremism in the, in the same way. They, 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 there there will be not. no equivalent group looking into Antifa, for example. In fact, right? if you go to the next one, the uh, typology, the Buffalo attack, what are the, m- yep. the media platforms? Odyssey, Kick, DLive, 4chan. All right. No, no YouTubes yep. here. No, no Twitch, huh? Oh, no. Kiwi Farms, yep, yep, yeah, all of these other kind of sites. Um, to be fair, there is some Discord stuff here, but it's mostly just smaller sites, right? They're not going after the big ones, even though I guarantee you, um, YouTube has spread more white supremacist ideology than a place like fucking D Live or Kick, <laughs> just because YouTube's so much bigger. You know what yep. I mean? <laughs> And the, these yeah. are absolutely people who who want a payday. That's what they do, and they they want to get paid, and they have a specialization, and they're looking for whatever is popular. They are grifters by the purest definition of the word. Yep, this is probably like I think looking into some of these people in this organization might be useful. Are the Americans partnering with them too? Let me see here. Uh I don't believe they've actually mentioned any specific partnerships at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I think this video might be useful for another for a an autistic Heresy deep dive requested. sometime in the near Fire future, you know. <laughs> Cuz the American one is mainly just urging the various uh, federal agencies to start doing this, to start looking into it. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I see the Canadians pitching in on this, but not the Americans. Oh no, hold on. Hold on. Perhaps perhaps I have I found it. We're doing like Gamergate research real time here. <laughs> it's, it feels like the old days, man. Well, that's because it is the old days now. Heresy's the question. Fire <laughs> it's all is come the back. answer. <laughs> 
just like it always deserved to do. <laughs> right, I gotta get the actual name of this. Gaming Research Network, okay. I'm gonna control F this PDF real quick to see if we have anything. Oh, we do. Okay. Here, so this is from... What is this called? The Government Accountability Office. This is an American source. Okay. So, here's the PDF. The FBI and DHS need strategies and goals for sharing threat information with social media and gaming companies. So, this is this is how ah, they yeah. want to be... Uh, yeah. Yep. How, how they want to counter vile extremism, violent extremism in... In, in gaming. Okay. If you do a control F here. Oops. I accidentally bookmarked it. I probably should anyway, but control F here. Gaming Research Network. They come, they do come up a few times. Yeah. Apparently someone from one of their offices went to a meeting with the Extremism and Gaming Research Network in April of 2023. Yep, the guy they were consulting with is the guy we just uh, mentioned, Galen Lampiri Unglund, or whatever. Yep, it's Debrina. Yeah. So, yeah, so it seems like the, yeah. So here, here's the list of organizations that have have participated yep. in this PDF. Experts There's a, a whole who participated list. in the GOA's interview. Yep. So. Extreme and Game Research is there, but also so is the, the Anti-Defamation League, the Southern Poverty yeah. Law Center, like all the big names, yeah, the ADL, right? ADL. Several so, so, from the ADL, yeah. actually. Several from the ADL, yeah. So all, all these names from all these different organizations where their whole thing is, we need to make sure that people don't say mean stuff online. It's like, okay, guys. Because this is just the next step in the grift. Like, this is the same enemies, as always, doing... Th this is why GameGate 2.0 is so fucking real. Because this is literally the speed run. Because right? it took a while for to get the FBI involved the last time around. But they're already working on it. Because they know, right now, as we've said countless times, right? Leftism is still in power of the levers uh, of the institutions. They can still wield the institutions. They still have power within the institutions. And so that's what they're going to use. And getting money from the government is one way they're going to do it. Getting the institutions to try and... This is literally them going, Hey, FBI, could you dig up some dirt for us, please? <laughs> Well, I mean, that might be part of it, but it also just might be like these guys become sources or like maybe sources of, of training for some some department inside the FBI or something, right? Where it's like, hey, they want to make some money. Basically, you're like a series of a series of agents who are just going to sit on your fucking Discord all day and monitor what you do. Well, how do they know what to do? We'll send them to like a seminar given by the Extremism and Gaming Research Network, and I'm sure it'll cost something like a hundred thousand dollars per agent. But they'll put on a seminar, and now now our guys know how to sit on Discord and and watch gamers, you know, dropping n bombs in their video games. Oh, absolutely. And that'll be the yeah. question. Fire is and Gillian Lampery Ungenlund will uh, will collect a hefty appearance fee, no doubt. Like the the amount. Yeah. Oh God. If anyone is ever into, like, big corporation stuff, um, you'll know how many, like, consultants and such people operate in these things. Pure leeches, practically, that just go there and get a paycheck and do nothing. Their, their entire industry surrounding the idea of just gathering paychecks to pretend to solve a problem that, as we see here, they've usually made up in the first place. Sounds like the bourgeois arch, comrade. Mm, sounds like the socialists. The socialists are the new word for the bourgeois. <laughs> well, no, unironically, because, okay, let me, I, I, okay, I can argue this fucking point. I can, now I realized. The bourgeois was just a term for the, uh, the ensconced privileged class. Well, guess what, Dev? The ensconced privileged class right now are the socialists. <laughs> Which is why, chat, you shouldn't be so ashamed of using a socialist-type analysis against them. They're still your enemies, aren't they? Hmm. Careful. 
agreeing with Dev too much can be dangerous. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. The reason I read all those books about Lenin is because they end up being useful, okay? Service guarantees citizenship. And of course, this also does because it is useful, right? Because we now know what the next step is too. Because this is known, all right? They are making the thing to get the levers of power moving in their direction because they're within the institutions. The next thing is going to be that they find something. And I guarantee you, they will find something. And then that will be the next step against the Gamergate part, where we are again going to return to arguing over the 98%. They're going to bring up their studies and they're going to go, hey, we saw this and this much increase in extremism. Here are the top examples of extremism. And this will then be used to paint their opposition in a negative light. We saw this too during Gamergate, where, you know, people like Sargon started calling Nazis and so on. The, uh, well, the so Sargon only... back then called them third-party trolls, right? Because there, there one hundred percent were people who were just fucking around on 4chan. They were fucking around in IRC chats. They're thinking it'd be fun to just rot, just to stir some shit up and rile someone up. So I'm gonna go on this completely new Twitter account with no name, no face on it, nothing, no post history, and I'm gonna go post at Anita Sarkeesian and call her a bunch of slurs or send her some threats, and then put the hashtag Gamergate in the tweet, and then watch her explode on all the people who are actually publicly Gamergate, like Sargon, for example, right? That's how these things work, is there's some, there's, there's some shit stirrer who's just having fun at, at making some chaos and laughing at it, right? And, and so he ends up pitting these two sides against each other. Yep, and this is why I'm saying that they're going to find something. The only real difference is, back during Gamergate 1, these people had all of the, not just institutional power, but the cultural power. Their accusations will not have the same weight anymore, because you call somebody a Nazi or a white supremacist today, the first question out of Normie's mouth is going to be, yeah, but what do you mean by that? Yep. That is kind of the big problem, is the the the, the coordination of the second, you know, the, the 2024 era round of articles where they said gamers are dead didn't work this time. It worked 10 years ago. It did. It pretty much it pretty so much destroyed Gamergate because everyone just got enraged and forgot the actual goal. This this time, no one cares because no one trusts them anymore, right? So when they all came out and they're like, "Oh my God, gamers are doing this to poor sweet baby Inc." Everyone's like, "Yeah, so what?" Like we we've all now been kind of immunized to this sort of to this sort of attack. Ten years ago, we were very vulnerable to it. It's also that um, they weren't ready for this to the same degree. Um, I'll link a Reddit post here. If you scroll down just to the first uh, thing, there's a list. So these are all the Gamers Are Dead articles that were released. Like, there are so many. They, they were in lockstep prepared. Like, this was an offensive launched with a directed purpose, and it worked. Whereas now, not only are there fewer of these publications out there that are still relevant, Fewer of them are trusted, they have less reach, and they have less power. And so when the anti-game gear 2.0 articles released, there weren't that many of them. And they were even less worthwhile, because like, oh, the tiny, the tiny consultant company, Sweet Baby Inc., is under attack by the evil gamers. And they all repeated the same lies and the same factual inaccuracies, and it just sounded bad to everyone involved. Because you can't simply keep calling everything an ex ex uh, English conspiracy theory forever without ever presenting any receipts. Eventually, people are going to start calling you on for it. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's exactly how it is. Um, it's also just the fact that um, partially because of Gamergate, though it was already naturally going in that direction in the first place, the the trust of gamers and also the interest of gamers just moved away from written articles, right? Now, if you want to know if you should buy a game or not, you don't have much money, so you got to spend wisely. You, uh, you go read some online reviews. You watch a YouTuber or a streamer who's playing through it. Um, you're not going to read an article the way that you would, say, 20 years ago. No. Like the gaming media used to be our only real access to information about video games. They had a complete monopoly on it. They had our complete trust. And they abused it. And now they don't. Yep. In fact, I remember people saying uh, back during Gamergate that a lot of this was kind of a a desperate, last-ditched attempt by the game press to wrestle 
wrestle control back from YouTubers because in 2014 YouTubers were still like were still like there were there were big YouTubers in 2014, but they, it's not the way it is now. And they were on the rise, and they and I think a lot of the games press kind of saw the writing on the wall, and they're like, we got to we got to get them back on our side somehow. And I guess their gambit was to attack them, which didn't work out. <laughs> When the solution was oh so simple, uh, just become professional paid jills. Well, it was to apologize, right? Like, man, okay, for those of you in the chat who, who who weren't around during Gamergate, I want you to to understand this, okay? You you had an instance where Zoe Quinn cheated on her her boyfriend, and five of the people she cheated on with her, him with, because there were many many people, but five of them were relevant to. Not not just in terms of drama, but in terms of actual the, the games industry. Five of them are relevant, and one of the five, Nathan Grayson, reported on a public event that Zoe Quinn had attended, and he was the only person publicly reporting on that event, making it an obvious conflict of interest with Kotaku. Right? All they had to do was apologize and say it won't happen again, and it would have done. It would have been done, right? But they escalated, and they kept escalating, and. When they escalated and it didn't go away, they escalated again. And they escalated this all the way to the point that Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn were at the fucking UN. And then and then the entirety of online culture changed and shifted. And you had a whole bunch of people. Like, like I don't know if you guys remember this. In 2015, Sargon was a Bernie bro. And now he's like, like, like a conservative activist, right? You You lost an entire generation of people to the right. And it's like... You, all you had to do was apologize, and none of this would have happened. And rather than apologize, you escalated and escalated and escalated and escalated. And that's what's happening right now. Because now they've escalated it to the point that the fucking Department of Homeland Security is talking about this shit. All you had to do was apologize and stop. And Gamergate would have been over. The they, they, is- they've, they've, they, they've, they've made this problem for themselves in some, in some instance, in some case. I actually agree with your first analysis that they did this because they were becoming irrelevant. Um, because they definitely saw the writing on the wall. Because I remember um, their um, and the, the answer was absolutely be, to become paid shields too. Because I remember after TB passed away, his editor had like a long talk about his uh, like career and time with TB. And one of the yes, most interesting question. things Fire was that Total Biscuit was the <laughs> game reviewer for a very long time, right? Everyone was sending his game codes. Everyone wanted him to review uh, games. It was even, um, there, there was a big drama when he didn't review an indie game that actually became like pseudo popular. And everyone was like, why didn't you review this, TB? Like this guy could have been so much more popular if only you'd uh, reviewed his game and so on. And, and near the end of his career, he stopped receiving a lot of review codes. And he asked his editor who was handling his email code, like, why don't I have a review code for this and this, this game? And he simply said, because they're not sending them to us. And this was after Game You Get. This was like, what, 16 something? Um, because they had realized that it was simply easier to send the review codes to the people who they could count on. Like, the gaming companies used to send out review codes to literally anyone because there weren't that Paris many reviewers around. Fire. But as there yes. were more of them, <laughs> it became profitable to send it out specifically to people whose opinions they could rely on. That is how gaming journalism still exists today, because now they receive advanced copies. Uh, they've, we, we, they've even told us straight to our face that the reason why they cover stuff in the way they do is because if they don't receive these advanced copies, they don't get views. Nobody's going to go to Kotaku or PC Gamer for anything but the content that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, that's all true. Um, also, I think, I think things have changed to the point where, like, you, you see AAA games go on sale for, like, half off three months or six yep. months after they come out now, which is not the case, you know, five or ten years ago at all. And I've, I've noticed that even I can get a, a review code if I just ask for one, right? The, 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 like, I know the, the, what, what you described, Arts, is true, but push push forward now to 2024, and they're just giving out review codes like fucking candy. And and they're marking their games down like crazy, too. It seems to be the case that, like, on some level, they, they just don't give a shit anymore. Well, like, like, in it, an it, interesting it, way, 
Um, this I, I got a copy for free of like of like Assassin's Creed Odyssey just for no reason. <laughs> I, I, I just look, I, I looked at my fucking inbox and Ubisoft was like, "We'll give you this game," and I was like, "Uh, th- thanks." It's like, okay, why? Yeah, but I that guess I happens. Have it, like, yeah, I, I was given a copy of Power War Simulator <laughs> with for the 40k <laughs> DLC as if by Square Enix. Like, hey, would you want this? I'm like, I don't know if I do, but thanks. <laughs> And this is because they've actually devalued the review now. Like, back in the day, I watched Total Biscuit fucking religiously. Like, everything he did, I, he, I watched. Because I was looking for new games to play, and he was, like, the trusted source. And one of the, the sources that I knew I could go to, and he'd probably have Here's something cool for me, right? Fire now, <laughs> I haven't watched a review in a decade, because who the fuck am I going to watch? Like, PC Gamer? Kotaku? No, I'm going to do my own research. Like, it has killed reviewers. Because so few people trust them, and if they do trust them, they have, like, this one guy who they're like, yeah, this guy does reviews, he does pretty good, and, like, he knows my tastes. And nobody uses the fucking yeah. PC gaming sites anymore. Like, they cater primarily now to guides and shit. Like, how do you solve the dumbass box puzzle? Let me tell you. Yeah, thinking about it now, it's like, what what YouTube channels do I watch that, that aren't political, Right. I mean, I watch Linus Tech Tips, but he's like a tech guy. He doesn't really review games. He sometimes reviews hardware. And his hardware reviews are good, but it's not a game, right? But, like, the, the game reviewers, they seem to be, like, gone, you know? You know, Total Biscuit died. Spoonie fell off. Oh, um, God, Spoonie. <laughs> game Grumps was a good channel at one point, but even then, they were Let's Players. And, you know, if, if a Let's Player you like is given an early copy of a game and Let's Plays it, that's kind of a review. Kind of, yeah. But... I mean, less players have largely fallen off, right? Uh, streamers, uh, gaming only streamers, are are kind of on the way out too. They've all been replaced by like like just chatter women, you know. So, like, are there really reviewers anymore on the internet? I'm I can't sure think of that there many. are. I just I don't. They they're not in my sphere of interest at all. Oh Yahtzee, yeah Yahtzee's still doing it. Okay, he's like the one. The one that I would trust that's still around is Yahtzee, it seems. Is Angry Joe still a thing? I'm sure he's he is. Going? I mean, no, I don't think so. I haven't watched his, his channel over 10 years as well. Uh, I mean, he, he was accused of sexual molestation uh, a couple of years ago. Remember that? Yeah. And he did the right thing. He's like, nope. Man, I'm looking at his channel, and like he has 3.28 million subs, and his v- he, he has views around the same, same amount as me. It's like, oof, that's rough, Joe. Yeah, because again, like nobody gives a fuck about reviews anymore. Yeah. Simple, simple as. Ah, Spoonie. Here, chat, I'll put up Spoonie on screen for a little bit so you get to be sad with the rest of us. If you know who Spoonie was, that. So here's what I found, okay? Um, The Department of Homeland Security is funding... Some sort of online, uh, some sort of online mental health resource called TakeThis.org, <laughs> and they put out a GamerGate Two article. So, these are some tenuous connections, but money is changing hands. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember seeing this one. Heresy's the question. Fire yep. is the and they answer. talk about GamerGate <laughs> and ext- <laughs> extremism. And, and you know, like sweet baby, and it's all just how terrible the harassment is, and how terrible gamers are. Like all this, all this shit. All it's it all just feels tired at this point because nothing here is new. It's all the same things they said ten years ago. Yep. Except now it has that official corporate governmental veneer. Uh, if you go to their front page, they've got that little mascot with the sword and shield because they're like, okay. What what do gamers like? Like let's do like a a superhero and like like wings and like a sword and like shield, but not a not a sword in his hand because that's aggressive. Serve guaranteed citizenship. This is like its own style, the corporate style. Whenever you go to a corporate or government website, they're all the exact same layout. I swear to God, they all use the same company for this shit. Yeah, yeah, probably. Hold on, I'm, I'm looking at their. Take this dot org. Fa- uh, or sorry, sponsors. Double fines down here. Fucking games for change is down here. Child's Play, of course. Bethesda. Riot Games. 
<laughs> the Digra Foundation, Xbox and Ubisoft. <laughs> oh God, Te Team Salvato. Here, Team Salvato. They did um, Doki Doki Literature Club. So I remember my uh, my sister was tapped to do official merch for Doki Doki Literature Club because she's an artist, right? And she was like, listen, Dev, this was years ago, so it's fine. But she was like, listen, Dev, you cannot bring up the fact that you're related to me <laughs> because I will lose. <laughs> These people are so progressive and I will lose. <laughs> I was like, yeah, OK, I get it. <laughs> But yeah, like games. I recall Games for Change. Games for Change was a fucking. It was a yearly conference they put on at E3, and it was all just a bunch of progressive bullshit. Of course. It's like, how do you make how do you make your games actually impact the world the and change politics Fire, and make answer. things more progressive? <laughs> well, come come watch Games for Change. Where we lecture at you for two fucking hours, and it's like, where's the video games? This is E3. Where's the fucking video games? It was one of the final nails in the E3 coffin. They dragged the corpse along for another couple of years, but now E3 is over. Yeah. I guess the last thing I'll say about this topic is that I know that there's this sort of sinister conspiratorial lens you can you can take to look at the story and be like, oh my god, the feds are involved. Games are actually just being completely directed by Joe Biden himself to brainwash people into being communists. And it's like, no, that's not what's happening. That's not what's going on. What what's going on is they're competing for government money. There's government grants. There and and basically they can push progressive politics. They can shit up games, and they can make a lot of money doing it. But this, I don't think it's a scheme from the government. I just think that it's it's one of those things where like people at the top don't know what people at the bottom are doing, and just there's just a, a big financial incentive here. Women and power and a little bit of uh, political incentive. And the fact that, again, these are the levers of government that they have access to, which is why they're, say, celebrating the women of DHS thing on the front page mm -hmm. of the DHS. Yep. <laughs> Joe Biden uses video games to bomb Israel. <laughs> okay. I wish. All right. Let me uh, do some super chats. I'm sure there's some of the, uh, the topic here, then we'll move on to... Man, okay, one guy, one guy in the chat is saying, "No one is saying that, Dev. You're strawmanning us." And then one guy, the other guy in the chat is saying, "Dev, you're coping if you don't think it's happening." <laughs> it's like, okay, guys, come on, you can't. <laughs> okay, go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Mate Svejic, hello, Aunt. I want to ask: Is the upcoming game Trench Crusade on your radar? It's pretty grim dark and has Mordheim rule writer working on it. Trench Crusade. Isn't that the um it is the tabletop game, isn't it? Yes, it is the uh, tabletop rule set. Um I've looked at it. It looks cool. It has nice art. It's got a cute universe. Um but Unless it's going to be making a video game adaptation, then it's probably the extent of my interest as uh, I'm not going to get into another tabletop war game. Especially not as I'm working on one of my own. Hmm. Most of the next 21. Hello, fellow gamers and others on the watch list. We will all be on watch list soon. If we're not there already. I mean, Dead is probably on the watch list. Elsa Serrano. Yeah, Random fact for Arch to read out later. Did you know the proper name for Canada is the Dominion of Canada? I think it is, actually. Oh. Or is that just like an old name that's, that it's been... Hold on. The Canadian has confirmed. Let me see. That's way the too Dominion cool of Canada. A... Yeah, the Dominion of Canada is the country's formal title, though it's rarely used. Yeah, it sounds too cool. Hmm. Like, can you imagine well, that being introduced at like sporting events? The Dominion of Canada. You'd expect some real badasses to come out, and then just Canadians. Hmm. Right, a Dominion is a self-governing country within an empire. I mean, that okay. makes sense too. But it sounds way too badass for Canada. Yeah, where basically it's, it, the idea is that like the country's basically independent, and it kind of runs runs its own affairs. It doesn't even pay taxes to, to the central imperial government, but in times of war, they can be called upon. That's the situation. Okay, that, that sounds like what Canada is, I think. 
Zontas has a Russian offensive stopped. Three Russian forces have reached inside Bel Belograd. 20% of daily oil production destroyed. Ballot riots, a bad week for Ziggs. I guess there's reference to the Zs they painted on their doors. I did hear that Putin is going to win the election, though, with like 96% of the vote, so is that. Free and open elections in Russia, Dev. Isn't it amazing? What was that first part? That a Russian offensive got bogged down? Oh, yeah, it happens all the time at this point. Yeah, I was like, that's not news, is it? <laughs> that sounds pretty fucking <laughs> normal. <laughs> Yep, my my read on the entire Ukraine war is going to drag on for at least two more years, and it's just going to keep going for a while. It's one of those forever wars now. PSU says, Arch, why do you keep calling it a whole chicken when we all know it's an entire ostrich that he is consuming with a single blade of grass for a long? <laughs> you ever had off? Have you ever had ostrich arch? Uh, don't think so. I haven't either. I wouldn't mind. I do love how the um, the the Devian tales are always uh, escalating now, though. It went from, you know, Dev occasionally agrees to the government to now he so needs a government-approved state-issued court document to wipe his ass. <laughs> and this one, too, like, Dev has, I had a salad. And Dev's like, are we sure you had a salad? And now it's like, he's eating entire roast birds with a leaf of lettuce. <laughs> yep. That's just how it is. That's how these things escalate. Also, like, how I'm a communist, but I'm actually just a liberal. <laughs> Dev is <These> things... <laughs> escalation in human form. <laughs> Need to make another Devian picture that is just Dev's face on an upwards arrow. Must the next Line go one. up. I want to see Dev debate Razor Fist and lose to the fist. Um, depends on what, I guess. I still maintain he has no idea who I am. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we could change that. One thing that I actually learned recently is that uh, Razor Fist and Movie Bob used to be uh, used to be peers at one point. Yes, I mean, uh, back in the olden days, in the ancient times, there wasn't as much animosity between content creators as there is now. Mm -hmm. Movie well, Bob well, was I... um, a respected creator on an established website, The Escapist. Well, I, uh, I had, I had this fact, I, I, I knew this, but I forgot and I was reminded, but apparently they both got their start on very, very early screw attack with stuttering Craig. Really? Was Razor Fist there? Yep. Wow. I had no other fucking idea. This is like 2004 or 2006 or something like very early on. Hmm. And it's like, Damn. Okay. I mean, well, well, screw attack. Who knows, Dev? Now that uh, Rooster Teeth is dead and Warner Brothers killed everything, who knows? Maybe we'll see some sign of uh, resurrection. That would be yep, nice. I, that would actually be nice. I know, I know that Stuttering Craig made it public his intention to try and buy the brand back, so I hope he does it. I would be entirely in support of that. A uh, a gaming though I it it will need some significant re uh, rewriting from the olden days cuz uh, you can't just be a gaming site in today's world. I don't think it's possible. No matter how much people might say that they might want just a pure gaming site, we're we're beyond that. We you can't just have a gaming review site or a gaming news site. You got to have some some personas, some spin on it, some personality. And hey, if there is one thing that Stuttering Craig has in spades, it is personality. Yep. I mean, he got big back in the day for a reason. Yep. So, you know, he was he was able to do this sort of thing. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm not sure. I think if you could offer a site that had the appeal of old forms and and stuff like that, but was still ultimately funded by like embedded YouTube videos. You know, the, the the that guy with the glasses model of 15 years ago. I think there's an appetite for that. As long as it's done well, it's not like it's not crashing constantly or bogged down. There, I think you could do it. I think I, you, could, you could do it. I honestly don't think so. 
I like, I'm I'm quite black pilled on this. I don't think that style of thing is relevant anymore, just because there isn't the same hunger and general interest and enthusiasm for gaming at large. Now it's far more particular and uh, like individual driven cult of personality thing. There there needs to be something different. I think the age of just the gaming website is over, but who knows? Well, to be fair, if that's the case, it's because the games industry itself is killed it. in a mega slump right now. Yeah, yep. because like here, think think back to like what I call the the silver era of gaming, which is like twenty two thousand seven to like twenty thirteen, right? That that era, because the golden age is obviously like Super Nintendo stuff, but no, it's the, the silver 2000s. era, you tard, is. No, 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 the silver silver era, 2007 to, to 2013. Yeah, Golden right? Age was 2000. That's when it started. No, 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 90s nope, was 2000s. the Golden Age. 90, 90s. Nope. That's 90s. Not, uh, if anything, that's the Silver Age. The Golden Age was the year 2000. In any case, think back to <laughs> 2007 to 2013, okay? That, that period. There was a shit ton of, like, it was hype central on the internet because YouTube was just kicking off. Let's Players were just kicking off. Sites like Craig's were, were taken off. Um, you could actually talk about gaming on the internet with a bunch of people instead of just the random idiot in your fucking class, the one who actually liked games. Most people didn't. And also, gaming's upcoming offerings seemed incredible. Right, like the PS3 yep. looked fucking amazing. There was great games coming out on all the systems. Right, like a bunch of the Wii games were amazing. A bunch of the 360 games were amazing. It was hype central in this in this period. Right, the reason the Game Grumps got big in 2012 and then fucking died was because of this period. It was a combination of the internet being new and the games being good, and the surrounding culture being one of hope and positivity. Oh, that, that is the most important point, hope and positivity, because we were playing games with the express expectation that they would only get better. And this is why I say 2000s, by the way, because in 2000, it was still considered the standard for the sequel to a game to add more to the base game. Like, gaming was getting better. And we were just like, oh my god, in 2020, what are we going to be playing? What kind of absolutely amazing, sprawling, incredible storylines with unbelievable graphics are we going to have? And here we sit. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, like say what you want about uh, the first Last of Us game. But when that first came out on the PS3, it was actually, like, really, really interesting. The graphics were incredible for the time. The whole walk and talk kind of story simulator was very new, and it was actually like a decent little story. Um, the the, the gunplay and the crafting was all new; like it's it's all been done to death at this point. But basically, like the, they they made a game in 2012 that is more like a 2018 or a 2019 game. Yep. Which is why I think people loved The Last of Us so much. Um, you know they've they've since com they they immediately drove that fucking franchise into the ground but for like a a little period of time there it was very highly regarded but basically like yeah the the games have become all samey and all shitty the 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 hope and the optimism in the community is gone the hype is gone right no one's doing a big big amazing midnight releases anymore now i know that i'm a bit biased here but I will say one of the places where the, all this still exists is Nintendo. All Tell right. Yourself. You don't like Minecraft. If yourself. you don't like Nintendo, oh, if you don't like Nintendo, that's fine. No. You don't have to like Nintendo games. But like, if you compare Zelda Breath of the Wild to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it is exactly as you say, Arch. It is just a straight up improvement. It is everything the old game was and more. And that's why there's still hype for Nintendo games. People still get hyped up when the next Nintendo console is announced or when the next big Nintendo release comes up. And it only exists on Nintendo and a few other small areas of the internet because mainstream gaming has overwhelmingly killed this. So I, I, I do think you're right that like a screw attack type site, either, either it needs to have that culture come back before it can truly thrive or it has to somehow create that culture itself which might be possible. That's a good point. Create the culture itself, because it might, because I think that might be what it needs to be, that it needs to be something suitably old school, but also suitably new to become something different entirely. Mm-hmm. 
So we, we do need, we need something. We, we need something that can bring back the old hype days of 10 to 15 years ago. And Nintendo's doing it, but you know what? Um, not everyone likes Nintendo games, which is just, it's fair, right? Like, like you and Sargon Arch and, and Kibbs, you guys all like a specific type of game and Nintendo doesn't, doesn't make those. You know, I like open world RPGs. I like action adventures, I like platformers and Nintendo makes those and they're great, but not everyone likes those games. So that has to come back for other types of gamers too. Yep, it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to do a poll to see if it's the 1990s or 2000s that are the best uh, golden age. I expect you to be ratioed yet again, Dev. That's fine. You guys are all wrong. Poor Dev. He's delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Here. I, I've, I've sidetracked you long enough because I don't have that much more time and... Uh... You have super chats to get through, so I'll let you do it. In that case, uh, let's do Matt Walsh. Oh, are you sure? Yes. It, well, yeah, here's the thing, right? Like, for, okay, first of all, there's the, the time change thing. Fucked me a bit. Heresies and secondly, question. I have a scheduled stream with, with a donator um, in half an hour. And I was like, oh, shit, the time change ate an hour that I was going to use. But, I mean, I, I, could, I could start, like... 30 minutes late on that. I, I can, maybe, I, maybe I can give you another hour at the most. Okay. Well, then in that case, let's do the Matt Walsh thing, because I suspect this one might be shorter as well. So this started uh, with episode 1,326 of the Jesus Ma Christ, Matt Walsh Matt show. Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good on him. He's been going for a while, clearly. Like, he's had a very long, successful career. Is it a daily show? Uh, it's got to be with that many, with that many episodes. I don't. I don't, Service guarantee I don't know. citizenship. I, I don't know idea, honestly. Um, but it's titled "The Radical Wokeness of the Video Games Industry." Uh, today on the oh. Matt Wall Show, the video game industry has perhaps done more to indoctrinate children into wokeness than any other industry. Yet it largely escapes scrutiny in the mainstream. Is the opening blurb, and it, 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 throughout it too, also it comes across. I, I don't know. Have, have you listened to this, Dev? I have not. No, I've seen like clips, but no, I've not listened to the specific one. I listened thing. to it a bit, and it really comes across as if Matt Walsh has suddenly realized that video games have wokeism in them. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> so you little motherfucker. <laughs> you know, considering Gamergate converted an entire generation of gamers rightward, you know, Mike Cernovich and Milo both got started in Gamergate. Like, okay, dude. Yes, it's it's a little bit like it comes across as like the honestly the the charitable interpretation is hello fellow kids I heard you were talking about this popular thing can I can I join your games right the less charitable interpretation is a person that has been quite vehemently anti video games going well this is popular I should get on board. Hold on. I, I wanted to confirm this for myself, just out of curiosity. Okay, Arch, we, we don't got to dwell on this too long, but I'll post this in the link channel. This is the Matt Walsh Show episode one. It's from six years ago, and he's just kind of sitting in his car talking to his phone. <laughs> it's like, well, you know what? He's... uh. He's come a long way. Good for him. I mean, he's clearly done very well for himself. Like, the Daily Wire has become a big deal. No doubt about it. Yeah. He's done very well for himself. And there's the thing. I don't mind that. Like, I've got nothing against Matt Walsh, but I do have something against somebody entering into a field that is already very well populated with a lot of very well-known figures, and somebody going, Hey, now I've discovered this. And I'm going to weigh in on it, particularly when this is also the same guy who has spoken out against video games on quite a few occasions. He's called video games childish and pointless and a the waste of time, who has blamed them openly for violence as well. Uh, he's made a Daily Wire art article, for example. The real danger of video games is that it has nothing to do with violence. Then he goes on to write an article about how it causes violence or domestic abuse, etc. And claims that video games are a sacred cow in our culture. That he just, he's not allowed to criticize it, you know? 
And now that he yep. had that, all of the people disproving and debunking him was just a Twitter people, Twitter retards. This guy is not a gamer. He doesn't seem very interested in gaming. He doesn't seem very, uh, you know, into the sphere of it. He seems to have ideas that are quite opposite to gaming. And now he's he's very worried about the wokists taking it over. Like, it comes across as extraordinarily cynical to me. People in the chat are also saying that he, he said anime said satanic. Yeah, I posted that in the link channel as well. The one Matt Walsh episode where he says anime is sat satanic and that's my emotional fact. The <sighs> thumbnail says that's my emotional truth. You know, the whole this is my truth thing. I, I know that I had a so feeling that was going to start on the left and the right would eventually start using it. And I was right because it's so useful to just you don't have to say something is the truth. Just say it's my truth. You know, it's like, oh, well, OK, dude. But yeah. So anime is satanic. Right. So Matt Walsh is definitely 100 percent cut from the same cloth as the old Christian conservatives who wanted gaming censored back in the 90s and 2000s. And Arch, you and I are old enough to have lived through that. Yes. And it's the main reason why we didn't grow up right wing is because we were young gamers. We didn't want our stuff. We didn't want, we didn't want our games taken away by people like Jack Thompson. And we thought that their arguments were fucking ridiculous. You know, guys like Jack Thompson were getting clowned on by Penny Arcade back in the day, and they were the laughing stock of the internet. And this idea that Matt Walsh can come in and say the exact same thing and not get laughed out of the room just because leftists are also retarded now in a way that they weren't 20 years ago is, it's, it's delusional. Of course he's going to get laughed out of the room. And he did get laughed out of the room. Yes, and I, I think actually this was an excellent case of gatekeeping because he was genuinely roundly rejected as somebody who was very clearly grifting in this regard and i i think he probably was now grifting does have a very negative connotation you know maybe he's just like oh no this is this is my opinion belief etc but it didn't come across like that in the podcast it it is difficult to describe but it, it very much so came across as he had figured this thing out for himself and was now revealing the truth to us like i ah, do my dude come now <laughs> yeah yeah and and okay. the thing is dude oh. on the emotional truth thing because i want to expand upon that a little bit because it is a very valuable tool because here's the thing there are certain things and ideas that are totemic right and you like like degeneracy and when i say degeneracy i mean like full-on debauchery like eating yourself until you're 500 fucking pounds massive etc uh never working out like going to excess in everything this is bad and we could go so into a lengthy explanation a 50 minute explanation okay this is why this is how your body reacts this is why you need to exercise this is why you need to move etc 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 but it's a lot easier to simply say mm, morbidly obese people bad and that's so, kind of what this is doing. I did want to pull this up real quick here. Because you're right, people are noticing. It, and it it does feel a bit like that phase of Gamergate when right-wing personalities got involved. Because Milo jumped into Gamergate not really caring about video games. But it was a way for him to advance his brand. And he did. Right, He made a career off of Gamergate. Mike Cernovich made a career off of Gamergate. So... I think people are also sensitive to this sort of thing, too, where you have people who see leftists attacking games and they're on the right and they can go, I can make a career off this. And I think we're also we're now also been immunized to that as well. So you know, this this was Matt Walsh's reply to everyone giving him backlash for jumping in, you know, feet first with no idea what, what the fuck he's talking about. He said, uh, I have to say. I've been the target of some extremely unreasonable backlashes in the past, but this one is probably the most ridiculous yet. This time people are mad that I talked about an issue in the news. Apparently I have no right to discuss it because I'm not in the club. Truly the dumbest outrage I've ever encountered in my life. And man, that is really saying something. But the issue is that's not like that, that's Sir, part of why he had he was outraged, but it wasn't fully why he was outraged, because like as you said, Arch, this was his take from twenty eighteen where he said that video games are a sacred cow in this country, and I'm tired of it. Our, our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with games. We, we, you all must pretend insanely. There's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. So it's like, listen, we know 
that Matt Walsh doesn't have gaming or gamers' interests at heart. We already know that. It doesn't matter that he's right-wing. It doesn't matter that he's based or whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter that you might like him on other issues or you might watch his podcast. On this topic, he's not a friend. Yes, he is not an authority on this. And the, the excuse, it's, first of all, it's very like, oh my god, I have the, the bad, the people are coming for me, the gamers are attacking me. It's got very, very that vibe, the very left-wing vibe on it. And the simple fact is, you get, you can talk about this, you can, of course, you, are, you have your free freedom to do it, you have your podcast, etc. But you are not an authority. You're not an expert. You're not somebody that probably should be listened to. And he does present himself as if that is what he is, which is why he has spoken at length very authoritatively on this. Where it's like, of course it's harmful to the child. Like, this is, again, this, this is old school conservative Christian again. Like, why are you doing all of these incredibly oppressive things? For the children. I remember this. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Now, th there is an, ar an argument that... Matt Walsh's aim is DEI, right? It's ESG type stuff. And so he's going to, he's going to talk about it everywhere, not not including in gaming when he doesn't actually like gaming yep. because there's DEI in gaming. He's going to talk about DEI in gaming because his target is DEI, not gaming. And that's fine, right? But we have to understand that if DEI is completely routed and destroyed and tossed out of our society, that does not mean that Matt Walsh types will leave video games alone. They will, they will, in fact, endeavor to install a right-wing variant of DEI that does the same thing, but for right-wing politics instead of left-wing politics, and then we have to deal with that. Yes. So I'd rather not deal with that, frankly. Because that is his stated intention. Like, people are not going after Matt Walsh. Now, I'm not talking about this because he talked about it. I'm talking about it because he is in opposition to video games. He stated it again and again. He's made a... He's never hidden it until now. He has been vehemently against video games, and he has been... Uh, and here's the thing, too. When he says, like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it harms children, we got to find a solution to it, this is Matt Walsh not in power. This is the uh, this is the opposition going like oh we got to find a, a nice midi medium solution and uh, you know I'm not going to do anything extreme or anything I guarantee you once they get in power they're going to do the extreme thing because this is what happened to the left as well what'll happen if you get gay marriage nothing gay marriage will be legalized and twerk shows in kindergartens I think it's also important to point out that I think you can tell it's very easy to tell the difference between somebody who's commenting on this, but not because they like gaming, but because they intend to use this versus someone who actually cares, right? Um, Asmund Gold's been covering Sweet Baby Ink stuff for like a month now. He's been going over it and going over. He's been covering DEI stuff. And it, it got to the point where like, like Vosh was calling Asmund Gold a Nazi. He, like, oh my God, he's been converted to Nazism. It's like, why is, why, hold on, hold on, Vosh. Why has Asmongold been converted to Nazism? It's like, well, because he watches that, he, he watches that fucking lolly VTuber, Rev Says Desu. And it's like, oh, really, Vosh? What do you have to say about lollies? <laughs> but, but still, the, the, the point is, though, is if, if you look it over, right, um, Asmongold gets way more views than Matt Walsh, like, an, like significantly more views than Matt Walsh. Even the quartering gets more views than Matt Walsh. And I think it is in part because Asmongold and the quartering, whatever problems you might have about those guys aside, they seem like real people and Matt Walsh doesn't. He seems like a product. And he, he and he markets himself as a product. In fact, that episode of, of that episode one of Matt Walsh of him in the car six years ago, he seemed like a real person then. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he doesn't seem like a real person now. So it's I think it's important to, to point out that Matt Walsh is probably going to try to hitch his hitch his cart to this horse, and it's probably not going to go well for him. It's, it's not going to go as well as it did for Milo 10 years ago, I think. I would tend to agree. And it is important to point this out, because yes, just because they're on the right side of the political divide, that does not mean that they are the allies of gamers. That's very important, because I've kept arguing about this we are going to see a very sharp move towards the right. And it is our duty, as much as it is to oppose leftism, to then try to halt that sharp turn somewhere in the middle. That's the, that's the goal. 
not to go flying off to the other side and then start the entire fucking carousel from the beginning again. Yep. And actually, I, since I do keep my pulse on the left-wing side of the internet more than most people in our sphere, Arch, I wanted to pull this out. Do you remember Ashley Lynch? Uh, no. Ashley Lynch was one of one of those larger figures in Gamergate on the anti-GG side who was like one level below people like Zoe. And she's been spouting communist communist nonsense for the past 10 years but uh is it he, um does it happen to she be pulled, this this uh uh no different ashley lynch okay different ashley lynch. <laughs> <All> <laughs> no right. the ashley lynch i'm talking about actually lives in vancouver it's always canadians guys it's always fucking canadians so i posted one of her tweets there arch and she said because she's uh she was also in gamergate back when it happened um, she said, I feel like it's worth pointing out the last time this happened, the reason the, har the harassment campaign gained widespread momentum was because Breitbart amplified it. These ghouls know this and they're attempting to run the exact same playbook again. So I'm going to translate this from her public, her public statement Fire to what's actually answer. happening behind the scenes on the left. Okay. The left is going to take the fact that Matt Walsh is talking about the Sweet Baby Inc. Gamergate 2 stuff. And the left is going to take that and Harry use it to question. show Fire how we are all actually just right wing extremists and yes. Daily Wire supporters and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. This is um, this is also the thing with the DHS thing and the uh, extremism thing. They will take the most extreme person who mentions Gamergate at any point, and that is going to be the entire movement to them. Oh, someone in the chat asked, our sphere, Dev, are you a righty? No, 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 no. I'm talking about, like, our friend group. Because, like, I, I think I pay more attention to, to the left than, like, you or Sargon or anybody else, Arch. I don't know. You're you're pretty left. We, we keep an eye on it left via, the, via you. That's why we keep you around. <laughs> I think that's true, actually, because I'm always, like, I'm always, I'm always posting stuff in our private Discord where it's like, you guys got to see this nonsense happening. Because I, I know you guys aren't going to see it, but there's something, whenever there's something fun going on on the left, I show you guys. Yes, like, Dev is our communist canary in the coal mine, so everything we need to know the leftist take on things, we just look towards Dev and like, oh. <laughs> What's the status point of view on this? So, speaking of me not being a communist, should we go into in, into the final su a side story of this? Because I'll, sure. I'll pull out the tweets that we need real quick. Okay, so... Uh, here, I'll post them in, in the chat as we bring them up, Ar Arch. So, Boogie, because Boogie was, was one of the big YouTubers who talked about Gamergate back in the day, Boogie comes comes back and says, Hot take. Video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures about why being a white man is bad. And he has over 30 million views on this. And, like, Boogie is just getting shat on by leftoids in this, in this fucking thread. Just people saying, Do you actually think that... That that video games are actually are about white man bad now. Like Can't you actually think question. who 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 Fire what game what game like everyone's saying this. It's like Boogie, how could how could you turn far right by saying that this this is that video games lecture about why being a white man is bad, Boogie? How could you do this to us? So most notably was this guy's take. This guy's name is Derico L Baker. He's a crumb tuber. Okay. He uh, he was a very hardcore Marxist like three or four years ago. He got into it with me back then over some nonsense on Twitter. He says he, he says he's no longer a Marxist. He's now a non-denominational leftist, whatever the fuck that means. But he's still on the left. He's still a crumb tuber. Um, he was he was a big Vosh fan back in the day. Don't know if he is now. But he says y'all are just making shit up at this point. You're just pissing yourselves off, imagining shit that doesn't happen. Name one game that does this. I'm begging any of you musty dipshits to name even one game that does this. So he's asking for one single game, lecturing about why being a white man is bad. Just one is all he wants. And, you know, all the lefties in, in, the, in the replies are laughing. Ha, ha, ha. You showed him. You sure dunked on him, dude. And so I kind of waddle into the conversation. And I waddle into the conversation with this game. And I just say, you know, name just one game where the theme is white man bad. Done. And the game that I pull out is a game called This Land is My Land. Now, 
this game actually got pushed very heavily a few years ago in some E3 or something. And it never really took off, but but they tried to make it take off for sure. I saw I saw this game everywhere back in the day. But and I'll, I'll post the Steam page as well, Archer, if you want to look at it. Because that, that Ukraine flag on the game art, is it, it's, it's on the Steam page. They put that on there. That's not just a Photoshop. They actually put that on there. But um, the point of the game is that you're playing as a Native American during the American expansion west, uh, westward. And basically, all the white men are settlers. All right? It's white settler. It's white. You are a victim of white settler colonialism, and you have to fight back against against whitey. It is quite literally a white man bad game. And so I post this game and I'm like, dude, here, here's here's the one game that, that, you're, that you're talking about. And as soon as I post this, my tweet fucking goes viral. And I have every left wing commentator on the Internet in my mentions right now shrieking at me. All the bread tubers. All the fucking left wing video video s all the left left wing video essayists right all the fucking Twitter people everyone is descending on me right now because I'm apparently a far right Nazi gamer man baby chud for pointing this out. There you go, chat. He's a communist and a right winger. A right winger. <laughs> and what's interesting about this is that if you scroll through all the replies that I got. Service they're saying citizenship. Either, either they're saying lol it's just one game and it's like well hold on you only asked for one so i, I fulfilled the request you can't say you unless you're moving the goalpost from name just one game which is what the guy said to name more than one game which is ridiculous or they're saying are you or, or they're saying something like you do understand that natives were victims right they were victims to to, to white colonization it's like well Okay, fair enough, because they were victims to white colonization. But you didn't, you didn't ask for a game that says white man bad and then justified it. You asked for a game that said white man bad, and I found one. And like it, it's people like they're they're irrationally losing their mind at me right now. They're like they're they're shrieking and they're wailing and they're gnashing their teeth. And it's like, guys, I found the game. Uh, why, why do you why are you being this fucking ridiculous? And you know, I've I've now received like my share of threats and my share of insults and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, okay, dude, like you guys are all fucking retarded. Like all of you are fucking retarded. And the biggest problem is that this land, my land, bad's biggest problem is the fact that it was never finished. Yeah, because it was made by Ukrainians, right? And no. they had to stop because of the No, no, Game the, Labs uh, are the Garrett of Game Labs is Greek. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Games Labs is fucking infamous uh, for making games and then <laughs> releasing them and then not finishing them. Yeah. Uh, they've and made also, some great what, games, and they made some terrible games. What's, what's very interesting, uh, in my view, is that this game was actually cancelled by the left a couple of years ago because it turned out that they didn't have a single Native American on staff. Yeah, no, it's a bunch <laughs> of fucking Greeks and English people and shit. Yeah. And they're like, and they had to like kowtow and be like, we're so sorry. We promise we'll hire some consultants. Well, we promise we'll hire diversity consultants like Sweet Baby Inc. to come in and make sure everything's not racist. And it's like, okay, dude. <laughs> and Heresy. the the entire Ukraine thing too. It was the most <laughs> obviously half-hearted thing because it is literally just the Ukrainian flag photoshopped in to the splash screen of the game. And it is the cheapest thing ever. It's it's dumb. It's not a very good game. It had a cool premise, because the thing is, Whitey wins. <laughs> the, the, the main thrust of the game is, you cannot oppose the white man when he wants something. The white man will take what the white man wants. Yep, yep. The uh, I think the most common reply that I've received is people saying, you do understand that, that white people they were the villains in this, right? And that native people were victims, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay. But isn't that literally what the phrase white man bad means? Yes. Is, is it the white men were, were villains? Because they're bad? Like, aren't you proving what I'm fucking saying? It's like, like and of course, me pointing this out, they, they all immediately then replied to me with, oh, so you actually think that colonization's good? And it's like, well, on the one hand, yes. 
But in a more serious sense, it's like, no, no, no. It's not about colonization being good. It's about the fact that you asked for a game that said white man bad, and I found one. And it, <laughs> the the amount of mental gymnastics that I've witnessed these people, and keep in mind, like I, I think I might have, how many replies do I have to this now? I have, have 1,100 replies, and almost all of those uh, retweets are quote tweets, and they're almost all by leftists. So, you know, uh, counting replies of replies, let's say at least 2,000 replies, all right? And they're all people who seem to have no brain. And I'm watching this, like, I'm watching it, like, appear on my phone. I'm watching my notifications fill up. And it's just the dumbest shit I've seen. It's like, oh, my God, I haven't kicked a bee's nest quite like this in a while, you know? it Like, it, the last time I might have gotten this many people this angry in this short amount of time might have been, like, picking me a year ago. And that was the right, <laughs> not the left that time, you know? So it's like, man, it's it's sometimes wild to see what happens when you happen to go viral. You know what I mean? Dev to the pick of me. <laughs> Again, leftism of Dev is so so hard. He goes right wing sometimes, and well, only ready. <laughs> but so so I guess basically the the reason that we can kind of tie this back to um to to the Matt Walsh situation is because th this was Boogie also commenting on on the same topic. Basically, is Boogie jumping in, and it's like, you know. Neither of these groups actually care about video games at all. Well, no, Boogie a... put um, put a video well, of Boogie his Boogie... right underneath it. Because yeah. Boogie's well, primary goal here was Boogie's channel dead. <laughs> Boogie and also, Boogie, things. also Boogie's in debt. I don't know if you noticed. That. I think he's like, he's like fifty thousand dollars in debt or something. If you see, there was like a, a documentary done about him. He, he he needs some money, but but basically like. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's a, definitely a part of Boogie that cares about video games. He does seem to be a gamer at heart. But what, what I mean is, like, the broader right and the broader left don't care about gaming. Yes. It's a cultural battleground for them. And I think you can see, like, the reactions of people who, like, Matt Walsh and people who follow him. You can see the reactions of people talking to me on this topic in, in, this, in this other thread. You can see that a lot of them, they're just here just, just to, like, get W's for their political camp. They don't care about gaming. They don't care about you. They don't care about the quality of the games. They don't even play games. You know, they're 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 just here to ensure that this cultural space is is transformed and turned towards their politics. And they don't really care what you do with it after they've won. And that the left is winning right now, but the right wants to do the exact same thing. They do, which is why we need to keep both of the sides out as soon as we can win. Absolute gamer cultural hegemony is the only solution. Based. Now, let me get back to the Super Chats. We'll still have you around. Uh, Fondue, Dev explaining something. This will take several hours. <laughs> Sometimes. Honestly, I feel like I'm gish galopping more than Dev uh, half the time, honestly. Because usually Dev brings up something that I have to explain my thoughts on it, and usually that takes a while. And I'm sitting there looking at Dev like, did you get <laughs> all that? The question. Oh, no. Fire is the answer. Well, I, I, I know, like, when I was doing the, um, oh, what was it? The competency crisis video, I felt like I was going too deep down the rabbit hole sometimes. I was like, this, I, but I think, I think it worked out, but I, there was a lot question. to get through, I think. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Do you end? You understand that the, your, you, <sighs> You understand that the your return on investment on ESG is ten percent over any other investment option, which is funded by government regulations and laws. Uh, what do you mean, return on investment, as in the actual profits? Because I don't think so. If there was ten percent return on profit, I don't think they'd be closing it. That would be weird, at least. Maybe they don't like money. Zero Fire Walter, Purple States Woman, I know you love the state and slob of the boot like it's a feminine penis, but even you have to see the government shouldn't be funding this. Yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah. Also, keep, like, keep in mind, guys, okay? The socialists view you as statists, okay? Because from their point of view, they're the ones rebelling against the state, while the state and capital shake hands all the time, and you're the ones who support capitalism. So this idea that, like, you, you must be a statist to be a leftist, and then you must be an anti-statist to be a rightist, it's, it's just dumb. There's definitely pro and anti-flavors. There, there's pro and anti-state flavors of both the left and the right. 
Come on, guys, you can be smarter than this. (laughs) Dev comes in many flavors, both pro and anti state. (laughs) And Elsie Serrano says, Dr. Raymond Cocteau. Thank you very much. That was his name, the dude from uh, Demolition Man. Damn, that movie was so far ahead of its time. It must have been just. By sheer, pure, unadulterated accident. Like, Jesus. Uh, Read Fox Media. Remember, big conservatism is not our friend. We are at the stepping stool that they will use and then crap on us. Matt Walsh, Daily Wire, I am looking at you. Yes. They should be used as allies insofar as they are in opposition to the left. And then, preferably, discarded. Yep. Elsie Serrano, Arch is neither left or right. His stream goes straight forward into the bowl. Yep. I am the perfect the bowl. centrist. I am. No, I am. I am the perfect centrist because I will move left or right depending upon where we are and pull us back towards it. I am a gravitic black hole of centrism. Other people pretend to be centrism. I am the black hole. Yeah, but that's actually me, though, Arch. Nah. You're far too left wing. Arch, the whole competency crisis video was me admitting that the right was correct on that specific conceptualization of the problem. Eh, only kind of. I even said the left wing version of it, late stage capitalism, was just by far inferior. See, your left wing centrism, that's what you are. You're still sitting there perching on the <laughs> left, begrudgingly admitting when the right is correct. Meanwhile, I am on the far right side of centrism. I'm pulling us back to the center. As we head towards the right, my mass will drag us back to the center again. I am true south. (laughs) Okay. Lord Metalman says, Dev isn't a communist guy. He's just a big believer of the regime telling what's true. If it's not stamped by the Ministry of Truth, it ain't worth anything. I mean, the regime isn't actually communist right now. It's neoliberal, which is not the same thing. Marksman of 117B, and Matt Walsh is an old-school Bible thumper, a.k.a. evil. I do believe that to be correct. Was Matt Walsh the guy who, like, who previously had a career in Hollywood? That, like, uh, had, had him doing some weird stuff? <laughs> some weird stuff. I don't know, well, maybe. I, know the, I, don't know I know Stephen... Steven Crowder was in Hollywood for a bit as like a child actor. Listen. Oh no no, Michael Knowles did a film where he was he he was a gay guy. Yeah. It was Michael Knowles. Michael Knowles has even though he, he's like a, he's like a right-wing pundit Service nowadays. He did a film where he was like a gay man having sex and they he had like a sex scene with another guy and it's like okay, dude. <laughs> See, I've come to a very important realization the question. here. Fire is and the that answer. is that true <laughs> south is always chat, which is why uh, Boog sent me this, one of your creations, Marks 117B. Chat has turned the fox into a horse, the barista into a ferret, the lawyer into a PNG tuber, and from your stream with Arch, turned his friend Kibbs into a femboy cat girl. With all this power, is chat not God? That's true. Chat is what determines what is and is not real. Chat is the orcish hive mind. It creates reality. Agree with the chat, Deb, for it is the guiding force that will lead you towards correctness. Nah, it's far too plebeian for me. Not interested. I am, in fact, above all of this nonsense. Uh, Reassure him, chat. Reassure him now. You know know what? You know what? I fully accept the socialist analysis. I simply... I am simply part of the bourgeois, and the bourgeois are good. Our third... They, by the way, I did the poll, 2000 or 1990s, 90s, I won dev. 90, the 2000s were the golden age of video games. We got to make it again. Uh, most next one, every time dev talks, I facepalm through my skull. Oh. <laughs> Serana, Tuni to comment on the Bible gun. Tuni to comment to on the Bible gun. What? Help. The Bible gun? Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. All right. Federation Prime, greetings, Arch, from the can third position crowd. YouTube collectivism is necessary for survival. Banishment for death back to Mudrace land, Toronto. You're not oh my wrong, God. 
Hold on. Okay. I, I, I unironically have to do a video on the old school third positionists at some point, like the <laughs> classical fascists. Man, I've, I, I've, I've recently, like just this afternoon, I went down a rabbit hole of, uh, okay, hold on. How can I put this? You know how there are some Twitter accounts where they say, they don't put their politics on their sleeve, but you can tell they're like left leaning. And then you also find some Twitter accounts where they openly say, no, I am in fact a Marxist. And they say it in their bio and they're always talking about like Marxist theory or they're a Marxist Leninist or they're like a market socialist or there's some flavor of socialist. Right. And they have, they just, they just have it on their account. It's their, the, their politics are their branding and they're constantly talking about theory. I've gone down a rabbit hole where I've discovered a people who are fascists and they, they do the same thing. They say, they, they have it in, in their bio. Like I am, I am this flavor of fascist from this specific movement. And they're talking about theory like 24 seven. And so they're, they're behaving like left-wing accounts, but they're, they're fascist accounts. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at these people and I'm like, oh my God, the, these people, they sound exactly like socialists, but significantly more educated. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> the the meme of fascism being socialism's final form there's probably some actual meat on the bone there it is unquestionably and this is hey arch ask dev if he got this year's pinup calendar of justin trudeau did you dev absolutely not hmm. right i'll get, I'll get a Pierre poly f1 though I'll, I'll get a poly f1 did you did you learn that we've named your dildo Oh, what's it called? Uh, the Path of Progress. The Path of Progress. Yep. Actually, Naomi asked that we throw it out when we move, so it's probably not. It doesn't have much more, much more time left on this earth, unless Dev someone wants finally, to buy it. Well, Dev is finally I'll, abandoning the Path of Progress. Listen, I'll will sign it for you if you want to buy it, chat. Boog offered Just to buy it know. for like twenty pesos, I think. Okay, you know what? Actually, no, that don't even cover shipping. Fuck you, Boog. Okay, Boog, if you're willing to cover shipping. Yeah. You cover shipping plus 20 pesos, I'll mail it to you. Done. Okay. And you have yourself a horse cock. Heresy is the question. <laughs> there you go. Fire is I the guess answer. I'm thinking Boog is going to be confused by this, but that's fine. Why well, Hayden says, hey Larch, how did you meet the fat maple leaf? I just finished painting my Predator Annihilator model today. Oh, I met him when he, I, I messaged him about the Total Biscuit video he did. And he said to me, Arch, we've met. You know who I am. That's how I met Dev. <laughs> it was one of the more awkward encounters I've had. As apparently I'd forgotten about meeting Dev at some point. Which happens to me quite frequently, incidentally. I forget people easily. As uh, so if I were to art, I don't even want these right-wing grifters on our side to begin with. Also, Dev, your left-wing straightest communist that drags everyone towards communism while saying communism has never been tried. He might be. He could be. No, I am not. Also, um, Arch, I think we first cross crossed paths like sometime after Gamergate. It was like 2015. I was hold on. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, shit. He's delving back into his archive to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I, I did, actually. I did. Were you part of the SPJ Airplay Gamergate event? August 15th, 2015. Oh. Because me, Sargon, and V were all there. And I think you were there, too. Ah, uh, Possibly. And if you were, that would have been the first time that I met you. Oh, there you go. I uh, old potato. That, that is that is like nine years ago. It's been a it's been a wild ride, eh? It has. Yeah. Dev puts words in chat's mouth and lies about what they think and the positions they hold. Dev calls chat mad and molding. Dev's weekly tac ta Dev's weekly tactics to make himself superior with his midwittery when Dev asks for proof. Just look at the first twenty minutes. <laughs> See, the problem is, Dev, you're arguing with the Hydra here. Even if you manage to get one of its heads, another one will bite you. This is why chat is God. Chat determines what is and is not real. Simple as. 
It's a, a position that has served me very well so far. Uh, Lucky Loser, just want to say how gay I find the way Dev runs his new Discord, and what's with the subscriber-only chat? Dev, are you monetizing your supporters again? I take that as tacit, yes. I did hear that he was doing authoritarian communist things on it, however. Service guarantees citizenship. Yep, no opposition. He's definitely is. Mark Chain, one of the 67 fired from Boeing for inappropriate comments. If I am found dead, just know that it wasn't me. That's true. Mark the same did uh, get fired from Boeing for inappropriate comments. And they are looking into why more of their um, their aircrafts are currently falling apart. Which, see, on the one hand, yes, they, it's probably a little bit mountain out of Moliny here. In that there aren't that many accidents, considering the sheer quantity of aerial departures every single day. I am sure it is a vanishingly small percentage of them which actually take Paris off without bits Fire and pieces <laughs> attached to the aircraft. But the fact that it is happening as frequently as it does happen, and the fact that the companies themselves are actually bragging about the fact that they have diversity initiatives does make one a little bit suspicious, doesn't it? Well, it's just like, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Excuse me, chat. I am just writing a thing, very important, and I can't much like Kyle, do two things at once. Speaking and typing at the same time is already taxing my ability to multitask. There we go. Uh, Mustang Expert 1. Don't forget the CI, CI meme department thing as well. Oh, that's right. They did actually set up a meme department to try and combat extremism online. Lord Metal Man, you watch. Did you see the new Dead by Daylight character and the meltdown its voice actor had after finding out what they voiced? P.S. The VA is trans. Yes, I did see that, actually. Let's see. Uh, I believe. Oh, so while I was gone, there was a question about my, uh, about my Discord server. Yes, I had to purge all the glowies. Sorry. Sorry, I had to purge all the glowies. And also, it's not donator only to get in. If you donate money, you can get in. But also, if you're a good person, I'll just let you in. There you go. If you're a good person, they'll let you in. Yep. Every day, I go down to the sewer chat. And if people are talking, I'll, I'll see what they've been talking about. And if they seem like glowies, I don't let them in. If they, if, they, if they seem like not glowies, then I do let them in. I'm gatekeeping, chat. You should appreciate this. Gatekeeping is kind of good. It is true. And yes, this was the uh, the trans monster, the uh, shapeshifter, or whatever. Oh my god, it's so fucking funny, dude. The f Did you see that uh, the voice actress has now like reneged and said that she wants trans reparations from the company? Yep, she wants reparations on behalf of uh, the the, uh, <laughs> the character she voiced. Fucking ridiculous, dude. That was a thing. That was actually unironically a thing. And I mean, the character does look unbelievably bad from her position, so... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Like it, it looks genuinely ter terrible. Like this twisted monstrosity. <laughs> oh, you, you kind of do have to raise a question mark. Like, what did so the developers mean by this? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Hold on, real quick. Someone in the chat, yeah, Jafar says my my Discord is now an echo chamber for me. No, it's not actually. You can you can still criticize me. Go ahead. All right. However. There are people who are criticizing me, and what what the criticism is, is they're like leaking shit to people that they know actually have it out for me, or they're they're like shitting on other people in the Discord and trying to start fights. They're going into voice chats and starting fights. They're fighting with my fucking moderators. All right, they're 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 turning around like I was like, listen, this is and then and then when I go into to ban them, they say, oh my god, devs banning criticism. It's like, no, I'm not. 
I'm not banning criticism. I'm banning you shitting up my community. You can criticize me all you want, all right? I don't want it to be an echo chamber. Listen, here, let me put it this way. If I was banning criticism, I would not invite um, Artemis into the server. Because all Artemis does is criticize me. But he's welcome to come in. So no, I'm I'm I am taking a full on stand regarding uh, regarding banning glowies and banning shit stirs, but I'm not banning criticism. No. You know what? Artem is onto your server. That's weird. And to be honest, Arch, you know, all jokes aside, you know. Oh, you're back, Arch. Welcome back. I am. Your sound cut out so, for a second. Go on. Yeah, basically, Arch, you know, any content creator knows this. You know this. I know Sargon knows this. I've had to learn this the hard way. There's a big difference between someone who's criticizing you and then someone who's actively making your community shitter, a shittier and then hiding their actions by saying it's criticism. Sure. It does happen. Yep. Anyway, I, I, I now have to go. But Dev, there's 20 minutes it's until time. you're 30 minutes late. It's time. I'll see you next time, Arch. Thanks. Thanks for having me on once again. All right. I'll see you next week, Dev. Goodbye. Captain Legbeard, then for three Heresy months. It's how government Fire funded research yes. operate. If you can't get the results you want, it's most certainly could never be because you might be wrong. Yes. And it's also just in order to get the funding to begin with, you need to get something that the government will want to pay you for. This is incidentally why we never do any sort of uh, investigation on whether or not uh, pedophilia, for example, is something that can be cured. Because we don't actually really want to know the answer to that question, necessarily. Elsie Serana, three minutes without looking. That's rookie numbers. I can start at stare, st star, star, stare, I'm presuming, stare, at porn for 20 minutes without a twitch on a bad day. That is true. Nye Mechworks, fiery but mostly peaceful fiery. protests yes. are a reason not to pursue false fire election fraud evidence or other dem stuff. Arch, Callum's robo waifu loves you. Callum's robo waifu loves you. Well, I don't know what this is in reference to, but thank you. And chat has voted 74% in favor that chat is in fact God. Good. Zero, Socrates was executed for corrupting the youth, and I'm sure we will get back to that in not too long. Elsa Serana, I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I believe in human greed and Dev's ever-expanding waistline. Mm. Human greed in two, uh, two areas. Is Larry Fink responsible for woke ideology push, says Boog. Now, that's probably for Dev. That's definitely for Dev. And as well, BlackRock, Citadel, Vanguard, State Street all own a combined 33% of all single-family homes in the U.S. They drive up the price for housing by overpaying and then rate renting out only. Yep, like I said, when you have that much money, you can actually change society. You can actually change reality to benefit your pocketbook. Which is why it's rather remarkable that uh, they are backing off of ESG, because even they can't make it profitable. profitable. Elsie Serana, plot twist. Dev is the secret CEO of BlackRock. I wish. Anna Tullop, I hate BlackRock because black. Good enough. And Boo Gladdy Fink came out and said it on TV, Dev. He probably did. And Tullop, chat is pissed. So, Jad, Dev, we're having to engage with the left in this way because this is the war they started. Trying to be the better person isn't working. I do agree with that. I unironically do, do agree with that. Because, yes, if you are being attacked in a certain way, using certain tactics, then the best way to fight back against those tactics is probably to use them against your opposition. And Ms. Fowl, Dev, you breathe air. You know who else breathes air? Socialists. You do the exact same th thing socialists do. I do agree. Like, Dev's position is a little bit too much. They drink water here, for my, in my opinion. Boog, they started saying it in front of cameras. Dot web of them. Srana, difference between Dev and chat is that chat is right. See? I told you. Chat is right. Thus, you should listen to chat. Which is, again, chat, chat is right. Chat is right in most things. Terrorized to most things. Ooh. What is this? Ooh. -oh.
digital spaces online. Online games should be regulated to address hate and extremism. It is the vital for Congress to examine extremist radicalization in these spaces. And we are grateful to represent Lori Thran for leading this effort. An important piece to read. Yep, the Anti-Defamation League is coming out in favor of the uh, DHS investigating gamers. Weird. And they, of course, turn off replies because they know that replying to the ADL would be a wonderful way to gain attention for yourself, no doubt. Mm. Elon's got to turn this off. He has to make it so that only people, everyone can reply. That's what. They need to be attacked. They must be attacked. It is important they are attacked. Harmonic Drive. Hey, Arch, my favorite pony VTuber. Can you give us your favorite Norwegian popular saying common phrase? Dev is a communist. Ave Imperator. Um, Sette ke boken til a second. That's my favorite Norwegian saying. It translates roughly into don't assign the goat to watch over the oats, which works relatively well in English because the goat will eat the oats and politicians will eat the oats. Uh, as well. Yeah, Dev, it's easy. Normal people want the market to cater to the demands of society, while socialists wants to destroy the market and dictate the demands of society themselves. Yep. Boog, Mexico nationalized its oil. It's not gone well. Well, Boog, you don't have the Norwegian work ethic. What can I say? You know, you're, you're just, there's something wrong Service with you. Guarantees something citizenship. odd. Something off. Something strange. I don't know what it is, Boog. Something. <laughs> That was foul. Dev, explain Oregon's move to recriminalize drugs after decriminalizing them. Whatever explain the explanation is, apply it to porn. Mm, probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, unironically. See, my position on porn is very, very simple. It is an outlet. That's what it is. Uh, that That is all it is. The, uh, what is it? The Texas? What is it? Ah, yes, Texas moved to uh, apply some sort of ban to Pornhub the other day. Over the usual things, like child safety debate rages across the U.S. And should there be child porn on Pornhub? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not really... It's not really a, a point to bring up, frankly. Like, no, but nobody seems to be in the pro position here. And yet we keep pushing this to regulate the sites more and more and more and more using the same fucking argument. Clearly, this isn't really the problem we're pushing at. I, I, th I, think, we, I think we can come up with a Harris more subtle question. solution Fire to this problem. <laughs> Because porn is simply an outlet. The male of the human species is biologically engineered to need to coom on and in absolutely fucking everything every 48 hours or so. If you deny them access to this ability, they'll get uppity and rowdy. And so porn, for all of its degenerate and dangerous and damaging consequences on society is the lesser of the two evils, quite simply put. Dr. Smith, there's a problem in our modern society, which is that we haven't clearly stated that corporations can only so exist for the good of citizenship. the public. Well, the problem then is who defines good of the public? Uh, I am not a capitalist. He says further, I'm not a socialist. I'm a citizen. I believe that everything within the state should be for the good of the citizen. Heresy is the question. Mm, now defined Fire citizen. Is the answer. <laughs> which the US, I believe, has defined <laughs> as everyone on the earth. Uh, Britain has. Britain said that um, their health care was open to everyone in Britain. Everyone in Britain. Not every British person. Everyone in Britain. Britain. So as long as you get it, get to Britain, British healthcare is open to you. Shadow Fox 23000. Matt does some good stuff, but man, that dude needs to just sit the fuck out of this one. He is just making an easy target. Correct. Like the What is a Woman was an excellent documentary. Excellent documentary. 
Antelope. Matt Walsh is the tarred conservative of yesteryears in many ways. Absolutely conservative Christian. And I do believe he believed that things that he believes. He believes that Sky Daddy is watching over him and more power to him. But I don't. So, mm. there are many valuable lessons to be learned from Sky Daddy. But we should not take all of them quite so thoroughly to heart. Slava Booga. Daily Wire is supposed is suspicious. Suspected of controlled opposition, upholding the boomer truth regime, steering the narrative from wandering into uncomfortable areas and instead going after low fruit like a woke ideology. Mm, who knows? And as Lope, when your side does something wrong, that doesn't automatically mean they are feds or it's controlled opposition or that it's fake. It'd be better. That's true too. They might simply be targeted. Mercy X21. It's called Problem Reaction Solution Dev. Look it up. Yep, create problem. Benefit from the reaction, provide solution. Boo, compelling argument, Leaf. Now face the wall. Dev will be the first to be executed for his socialist ways, it is true. No one says BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, etc. got so large because of regulated pension funds. This concentration of money is not natural. I agree. In fact, this is the failure of government. Like, government should never allow corporations to grow this large. I don't know what the exact size is that we should allow, but there is absolutely a point at which corporations should just be told, mm, no, you have too much money. Um, you're going to be two companies now. Simple as. Uslis, he should not change us. Flag hunting, trawling during Gamergate. It is, was fun. Uh, problem is the damage it does. Mark Chen, T-Series was the end of YouTubers. I would actually agree. Yeah, no, it, it was... See, right now... All right, let me sidetrack this for a second here. Um, there we go. So, this thing right here. VTubing. Now, initially, VTubing was one person who realized that, hey... People like cute anime girls. What if I became a cute anime girl? And they blew up and they gained ridiculous traction, ridiculous views, ridiculous quantities of money. But then, since this originated largely in the Japanese sphere of things, it got intermixed with the Japanese idol industry, which created VTuber corporations. This was a really bad turn for YouTube in general, because it continued the corporate infiltration Service of YouTube. Now, before this, this was also the thing with like stuff like Fox News becoming corporate entities on YouTube and being given special privileges on YouTube. T-series, who were every person who subscribed to YouTube in India was subscribed to them. That is obviously bullshit and no doubt about it. It is not a level playing field. And as more and more corporations began moving onto YouTube, they started to realize that there were more and more special privileges to be gained on YouTube. Because to YouTube, it was a benefit to have the corporations on there. Now, this is not an eternal growth spiral, however, because Sony's Prism project actually closed its VTuber wing. And so much to Sony's actual genuine uh, like praise here, right? They did actually go to the VTubers and go, all right, you know, we, we fucked this shit up. It didn't, it didn't work out. We mismanaged it horribly. Uh, sorry, you get to keep your models. You get to keep your brands. You get to keep your channels. We fucked up. Okay, you know what? That's actually a fairly nice thing that they did there, right? And they didn't need to do that. They were under no necessary obligations to do so, but they did so. Cool. Um, and you must think that surely a company like Sony would guarantee success, right? Well, uh, let's actually have a look at the Prism Project people. So this is one of them, uh, which is uh, will be allowed to maintain that account, right? And they've got a link down to the other people down here. 55k, 28, 20k, 41k, 70k, 151k. That's the standout. 26k, 29k, 49, 21, 22, 25. Jesus. Uh, uh, Gen 5 out of 6, 7k, 13k. The... Uh, Main Prism Project website, 15.1k. 
the overwhelming majority of the Sony VTubers is smaller than my secondary account. And the largest of them all is 100,000 subs smaller than my primary account. I, I don't even know how the fuck they managed this, honestly, because it's Sony. My, can you imagine the amount of money they must have had? The, the access, they had access to the Sony Music Library. The amount of covers that these people could have done, official, proper, premium covers, with production, with the voice acting, with the singing, with studios, with agents, with contacts to YouTube. How the f Fuck, did they mess this up? It's actually kind of incredible. Right? It, something remarkable happened here, didn't it? And now, in large part, I think this is because the VTuber sphere is just so fucking flooded right now. It's ridiculous. Like, the competition is so stiff that even Sony didn't manage to get into it. Which is pretty goddamn terrifying. Archcast is secondary. Oh yeah, no, no. Um, here, uh, this, this is this is my my primary channel, the lore channel. Two hundred seventy five thousand subscribers. <laughs> Did you not know about this? <laughs> you know, th this is my main channel. This is uh, my my bread and butter kind of style thing, right? This is the one I've been doing for years and years and years and years. Uh, which I eventually moved all of the commentary content over onto the Archcast. But yeah, like, Sony managed to fuck up entering the corporate YouTube sphere. Which is kind of nice, you know? it Because it means that we're not all necessarily going to be replaced by this. The corporations aren't an automatic win that will just swoop on in and wipe out the entire competition of the face of the earth, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy by it, by it, honestly. Even though it is also going to be an even worse position for everybody else, right? If you're going to try and start a YouTube channel today, God fucking help you. <laughs> God fucking help you. I mean, if Sony can't do it, what makes you think you can is is kind of the kind of the way you've got to think. And yet at the same time you can't think like that either. Like YouTube is just a thing you have to start doing and then roll with it and you need to set a pace where you can just keep rolling with it for the long term. Trying to see where you can go with it, right? And some people will never get anywhere. And this is also why we need to redefine success on YouTube. As far as I'm concerned, if you can manage to feed yourself off YouTube, you are a successful YouTuber. And that, that's the end of the day. You don't need to be PewDiePie. Not every YouTuber needs to be Markiplier. Not every YouTuber needs to be Jacksepticeye. Merely being able to live of it makes you a success in the YouTube sphere. And even that is like zero point something percent. I swear to God, like my um, my cousin's kids are like, wow, you're a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber too. And I just, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I have been actively discouraging them the at every Fire single the solitary <laughs> fucking turn. <laughs> I... But yeah, um, if Sony can't do it, what makes you think you can? <laughs> that sounds so, so asshole-ish, but it is also kind of true. Mm. Oh, Jesus. How did we get here? Um, I don't know, but let's return to Associate Bob whilst I go back to the, uh, the Super Jets. Uh, Ms. Fowl, Gamergate destroyed native advertisement. Yep, in large parts. Drifey, everything is racist, everything is sexist, everything is homophobic, and you have to call it all out from a woman who just had a pseudo-wedding. Anita Sarkeesian, her undying quote. Elsa Serana, I watch Arch for recommendations on Norwegian escorts. Need to know for my vacation. Unfortunately, actually, no, that's right. Okay, so, I was about to say 
Uh, prostitution is illegal in Norway, but then I can't court myself. That's not actually true. It is entirely, Ill entirely legal in Norway for a woman to sell sex. That is legal. You, 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 it's okay to be a whore. You are, you are legally allowed by the Norwegian government to be a whore. But you are not allowed as a Norwegian to purchase sex. That the is illegal. Fire is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? <laughs> it's because back in the day it was illegal to sell sex, which meant that when the police came, they would arrest the woman and not the man. And then feminism arrived and said, well, this isn't very fair. You should arrest the man and not the woman. And nobody looked at that and thought to themselves, hold on a second. Haven't we just reversed the standard? Have we not just created the exact same problem, but in the reverse? <laughs> <laughs> Service guarantees citizenship. Oh fuck me! Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's legislation for you. Mr. Twisted Frenzy, the spiffing Brit is fun to watch exploit games, but I suppose that doesn't really count as reviewing it. Uh, no, I guess. Uh, El Susana, who are Biscuit and Spoony? Also, is Dev a real boy or just an abandoned AI experiment? Gone wrong. TB, Total Biscuit, a best game reviewer that ever was, uh, died several years ago now from cancer. God rest his soul, he was the best of us and the worst of us in so many ways. And Spoonie was the funniest man on the internet until he elected to go actually legitimately institutionally insane. Not, not as in like, <laughs> oh, you crazy, as in we the jury find the defendant insane, all right? Oh, God help me. Uh, Minimus, any Ratten Reich news? Last I heard, they had bungled their Steam Fest demo. I know that. And they actually withdrew it. Uh, so I'm hoping they'll be able to fix it. We'll see, I guess. I didn't even get a chance to test it before they pulled it, uh, pulled it down. Mark Jem, even board game reviewers have gone down. It's like no one is making new games because Woke will burn anything that isn't progressive. And loot box was the beginning of the fall of gaming, he says. Yep, yeah, large part. Anyway, that's the problem too. Service okay, guarantees if citizenship. you're going to be a gaming news channel, you kind of have to do like hype around games, right? Uh, and how the fuck are you going to do that? W what is there to be hyped about? Necessarily, exactly. Like, w what are you going to do? And I was like, oh, this game looks good. It's just made by a bunch of wokey tards. Um, get excited, I guess. Zero, Maple Story. Maple Story. It's a video game, I think. I don't know. Is it? I think so. Yes, I'm correct. It's a video game. It looks very Chinese, though. I don't know if I like it. Alex Anderson. I love 15 seconds unskippable ads every 10 minutes. Well, it's only every 30 minutes. And it's 15 minutes unskippable ads. <laughs> well, hey, yell at YouTube, not me. Gontro Dim. Walsh is a midwit, which means middling, maybe upper middle intelligence, and seriously overconfident in his knowledge, with lots of bad takes. Uh, Charlie, hey, hey, Arch, Zine Tack, and Mandalore are good. I, I do know that. They are actually pretty good. But they also mostly review old stuff, and very rarely, if ever, current stuff. Because, well, they're, like, Zine Tack, I know. He does it because he's funny, not because he's doing reviews. Mandalore, I remember I watched one of his reviews, and I thought to myself, well, I mean, this is a good review, but I have absolutely no need of it because I've completely rejected reviewers. <laughs> Which was just, again, kind of the issue. Charles Anderson, Matt Walsh, anime statement, was a joke slash troll? Oh, was it? Okay, well, that's nice to know. Uh, Saabuga, in my Catholic parish growing up in the 90s, 2000, our priest said video games were fine, but parents should exercise caution. You are mixing groups. Well, priests can say they are fine, but the conservative Catholics were absolutely the group that were trying to ban video games back in the day. That doesn't mean there aren't sensible priests, of course. In fact, it had very little to do with the church, if anything at all. 
Can talk about your prime. I don't like conservatives like Walsh. They look down on games, comics, genre, fiction, etc. And mock it, giving it to the left. They got us all in this mess. Correct. Because it was in large part due to the established conservatives of the day considering games, etc., to be childish and not worthy of their interest, that they handed the playing field entirely over to the opposition. Completely. They weren't even interested in contesting it because they didn't think it was anything serious. It was a stupid pursuit for children. Well, the children are growing up now, and it's not so stupid anymore. Uh, if you don't, the puritanical torch will be passed back to the right, eventually, and so it goes back and forth. Uh, Rage of Mohawk Thoughts. Just started in 30 seconds in, and Dev picks a fight with the audience. Dev, last time we had a back and forth, and he states you were simply reacting, not being antagonistic. Seems like a lie, Dev. He was unusually aggressive today, it is true. Mr. Twisted Frenzy. Five months after release, and Realms of Ruin is now on sale at 1749. Even for a sale, that is quite the drop off. Tell me, Art, is Realms of Ruin even worth 1749? <sighs> Okay, let me bring it up here, as I keep inhaling snot through my nose. Excuse me, I, need, I am in need of refreshments, but I'm not going to get up and do it now. All right, so, Realms of Ruin is a video game. It's, uh, it's Age of Sigma, which immediately should turn you off it, because Age of Sigma is garbage. It, it, it just is. It, it just is. It just is okay you shouldn't like it realms of ruin is bad because it's edge of sigma but on just the basis of it being a video game right before before we talk about anything else it's just it's just a video game i did do a stream on it when it came out because well you know it is theoretically kind of technically warhammer in a way so right fine i'll cover it why do you select it i have internet now you can actually you can actually play it at a resolution. There you go. I did cover it. I did play it. It's got some cute ideas. Actually, I think I lose this game. Let's not watch. Let's not watch this. Let's me. Let's play. A, let's watch a game. I win. Yes. It's got some good ideas. It it's, it genuinely actually does have some good ideas. The idea that units kind of lock each other down on the battlefield, I think, is sort of neat. It allows for some interesting positioning. The hero units having abilities that are tied to your resources, I think, is a very cool idea. In that you use the same resources to upgrade your buildings and build units as you use to use abilities for your heroes. That's cute. Because that makes you think about every ability you use. Okay, this ability guarantees you win this fight. Nice. But now you're putting yourself back, like, a minute in your teching. Is that worth winning this fight? Neat idea. But the problems are far greater than the solutions. It has a very limited tech tree. It has like three buildings. It has no base building. It has just upgrade your base building. It doesn't have a whole lot of units. It doesn't have cool kill animations. It doesn't have very interesting gameplay. In fact, it's very simplistic gameplay where ranged units are just superior to basically everything goddamn else it feels like. The maps are very small, very linear, and very corridor-esque with no real room for movements. It doesn't have very good sound. It doesn't have very good voice acting. It doesn't have very good anything frankly. It is a very mediocre strategy game that might have found an audience 10 years ago when there wasn't a whole lot of strategy games around, but it's it's just like an inferior Dawn of War 2 in every way. So if you wanted to play it, just play Dawn of War 2, I guess. The problem is, too, also that I doubt it got much of an audience. Um, it was declared to be an enormous sales disappointment, so I would not be surprised if the servers are severely underpopulated at the moment, but who knows. 17 bucks, will you get your worth out of it? Uh, doubt it, honestly. Mm. Much ashamed. Angels Fall First is 50% off on Steam until March 21st. You really do like that game, don't you? Angels Fall First has some cool ideas, too. Hmm. 
Not Altharius, Dev leftists don't care about truth or consistency, just victory. You know this already. Power politics. To be fair, it's not just the leftists that believe that. Gaunter Odim, Dev is the chairbreaker. He is. He actually is. He's even admitted to it. Uh, John Ra think seriously what's stopping the organization of a gamer political party. Rather be a collectivist based around the lifestyle than morals. Probably because you, you, you would need positions on a lot more than gaming, right? You would need to be more than a uni party thing. You'd need to have ideas on uh, uh, abortion, on taxation, on the political system of the nation, on immigration, on fucking fishing zones, on farming equipment, on government regulation, etc., 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 etc. It's um, it's a lot of complicated stuff that goes into it. So John, the enemy of my enemy, is a problem for another day. But for day, for today, they might be useful. Correct, accurate assessment. Shadow Fox twenty three years zero zero demolition man. I swear to God, was made by a time traveler trying to warn us. Likely, quite likely, in fact. Domin, whatever happened to the Blood Bowl tourney? It's almost finished. Uh, well, then we're going to start uploading it. I'm hoping we'll actually be able to wrap it up fairly soon. Alex Adamson, we shall. Will Dev into being a rightist? Wag. You might be able to convince him eventually. Yeah. He's, a, he's taking up more and more right-wing positions the more chat yells at him. It's just a question about yelling at him enough. Zero so Firewater. Also, Archlay, notice how the purple stateswoman goes on and on about, say, I need to do this video and that video, but no word on the trucker video. Dev is defending the state because those are his people. I agree. A Dev is friend shape, and I will defend Dev when I think Dev needs defending and is in the right, but he is not doing the trucker video because he knows it'll be a Devian L. I know this. Dev knows this. Everyone knows this. It's just the truth, Dev. The Dr. The Dr. Topo. Dev, do you like Javier Miller, or is he too much right wing for your flavor? Is that the, um, is that the Argentinian, uh, is that the Argentinian guy? Let me Google him real quick. It is the Argentinian guy. Yes, it is the Argentinian guy. This guy. No, no. Uh, yeah. God damn it. Come on. There you are. I quite like him. I actually quite like him. Because he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was going to slash the fuck out of government institutions. And he did. He slashed the shit out of it. And inflation is down. Government spending is down. He actually seems to be pulling his nation back from the brink of annihilation. Good. I think he's doing the right thing, and I hope he continues to do the right thing. We'll see if he goes crazy, of course, but for the time being, I am all for it. Marksman of 117B, chat has power, chat warps reality, chat is God. Mark the same, don't worry, boing, I am not a whistleblower. That's good, because the last one died, so, you know. Why are you hating? Both left and right are bad. I am a centrist extremist. It's the only position to hold. Lucian, Kirsha raid arch? Well, Dev's payment for these uh, are Dev raids, so Dev must be raided. Guy under bridge, you uh, may have not like Ruby, but Ironwood was a textbook example of a villain who had every right to put Ruby and her team in a gulag to starve. Well, that sounds good, I admit. Psycho Psystar. Blackrock and Corpos got so egos egotistical that they took the foundation of their money and power for granted. Brand loyalty and PR can only last so long. Correct. A doman, Ruby Gain Dead. It is. It is all of those things. Dreyfi, regarding the moral panic in the 90s with music and video games, I am sure Christians were a large part, but wasn't one of the spearheads of its Al Gore's wife who had it out with Twisted Sisters. I so think so, but it, it's been too long to the point where I can't even remember all of that anymore. 
Elsa Serana, I believe in Sky Daddy for the God Emperor. Good. The Doctor Topo, no game, no games, no movies, and now no VTubers. Listen, we're going to enter into a period where you're gonna have to get all of your entertainment from the 2000s, okay? You're you're gonna you're gonna have to just go back in time, all right? And you're gonna have to rewatch old stuff. That's what you're gonna have to do. Here. I'll, I'll get you started on it. Uh, let's see. The Arch Norwegian example, right? Here you go. Pacific Blue. There you are. It's hot people wearing fairly relatively tight-fitting clothing. They, they could be tighter, but it's, it's a series about hot people being hot in the, in, in the sun. The average, the average male character, tight bike shorts, bulging bulge, big muscles. The average female, hot, mature brunette with boobs so big you can see them from her back. Old school television, my dears, old yes, school nice. television. Is this dancing. is what you're going to have to embrace whilst we go through the desert of nothingness. It's, uh, it's just how it's going to have to be, I'm afraid. TF Allspunk, disavow dev saving the left. Karma will be done. I agree. I agree. I <laughs> see. Unironically, though, we are the good old days entertainment. Truly, truly. When you could look at the character from behind and still see their boobs. Mm. Good old days. Good old fucking days. Good old fucking days. Hold up. Can I? Damn it. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. There we are. Shannon Mocklier. <laughs> the woman who started puberty for about 99% of uh, teenagers in Norway, I do believe. I wonder if this is too risque for YouTube. I hope not. We'll see. TF Allspark, disavow dev, saving the left. All right. An anime document, super straight flag is the Pornhub logo colors. <laughs> That's a good point out. Adobe, I want to see White Mountain Monkey Arch VTuber. Ah, oh, well, you're going to have to pay me a lot for that. What can I say? It's not going to be cheap. Unironically, it isn't. I mean, what? Those, those fucking VTuber models cost like 10,000 bucks, which is retarded, incidentally. Uh, Sujad, still playing Helldivers 2? Yeah, but basically only along with uh, Kibbs and the rest of the retards. It's, it's too popular, okay? And it wasn't a Power Wash stream, see? I finished Power Wash because you weirdos watched it like mad. And I was like, okay, well, um, I guess I'm going to have to start looking into playing answer. dumb stream uh, bait video games now because it's very popular. But uh, Hell Life wasn't as popular. What can I say? Lord Commissar Spartan, speaking of recommendations, a game that's a game I saw that might tickle your wife's senses is Cavalry Girls. Top-down mecha shooter with base management is neat. Cavalry Girls. Save 20% on Cavalry Girls on Steam. That looks a lot like Girls Frontline in a weird way. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. And Gabriel Nartea, a simple man with a dream, a chainsaw and a fuera. <laughs> yep, the Argentinian man. He brought his chainsaw along with him as he, uh, he campaigned to hammer home the point that he was going to cut cost. Evil Wall Potato, if chat is god, but all of chat call Arch our god, was that make what does that make Arch? Something better than God? Something more powerful and more divine? Compared to Arch, Dev is like a bacteria. True. True that. I am the god of God. The uh, the primordial deity. 
Uh, Cryomation just bought Movlove a Megaverse bundle. How long do you think that will take to complete? Oh god, um... Oh my god, okay, let me see. How I'm, I'm gonna look up what it includes exactly. Because I think... I think Movlove alone... I think Movlove alone... Megaverse. Okay, I can't actually link to this because it's technically a non-safe for work game, I think, and YouTube bans that, but... Movlove, one of the best visual novels I have ever read. It's a great, 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 great visual novel, okay? I heartily recommend it. I really, really do. It's an incredible read. And then there's also Alternative, um, which is, like... Move Love and Move Love Alternative. Move Love is like a hundred hours long, all right? And it has one of the best twists in gaming history. All right? One of these straight up best. And then Alternative, which is the sequel, is essentially just 50 hours of incredibly satisfying payoff. That's what it is. After a hundred hours of really good setup, Alternative is 50 hours of ejaculating. Okay? It's 100 hours of foreplay, followed by 50 hours of just cooming. But cooming emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> is really, 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 really good. Really good. It does have some hentai. It's very, very minimal, though. It's, it's not a fapping game by any stretch of the imagination. Have not read the other ones, mind you. Haven't read uh, Total, uh, Total Eclipse or The Day After or any one of those, so I can't speak to them. But Move Love Alone is going to be 200 hours, or 100, 100, 200 fucking hours. They are long game. And with all of the other, like, fan disc content and side stories and mini stuff... Yeah, you're going to be busy for a while. Um, you'll probably Here's be able to uh, survive the, the entertainment <laughs> drought just through that. Just through that alone. Uh, Sujan, look out for Era 1. Era, era 1. Era 1? Era 1. Era 1? Era 1. Steam. Is an innovative space game that combines element of real-time strategy, base-building, space survival, and tactical battles. That does sound pretty cute. And various battle fleets and engaged in tactical space battles. That does sound pretty cute, yeah. Six months. Alright. I will add that to my uh, to my wish list because that does sound pretty cute. And follow. Markman of 117 B, have you tried the Sun Raider games? First is free. I tried it, it didn't manage to hook me. And with visual novels, I gotta get hooked in fairly early, otherwise I lose interest. And no one hearing you ramble whilst power washing was great. I don't know about that. I feel like it wasn't. But now I'm going to have to play other dumb streamer games to see if I can recreate the phenomenon. Service guarantees citizenship. Uh, seriously though, 2000 Entertainment. It was it was a it was such a different era. It was such a different era. So let me bring this back Service to My Little Pony, of course, <laughs> because I've finished the research now and I can get started on the uh, the April Fool's Law video for MLP. <laughs> and my God, the the difference between. Here, l let me replace the hot blonde woman in her skimpy clothing with a bunch of horses. I'm sure you won't mind. The original MLP, it is effeminate as fuck. And it is blue-eyed and naive to the point that only a cartoon for little girls could possibly be. It is filled with flaws. But compared to the current day iteration, Jesus, it's art. It, fuck. <sighs> I had to watch a bit of the new one because there was like because there's some major plot points that happens over this thing that is uh, quite retarded. Jesus, 
animation quality, music, singing, voice acting, storyline, plot, mini-episode, characters, everything is a straight downgrade. It is as if when we left like 2010, 12, etc., we just forgot what entertainment was. Heresies the we simply just Fire blanked the on all of it. We completely completely forgot what entertainment was all of it every single lesson every tried true and tested ideal of of beauty of storytelling of lessons of morals all of it just poof, disappeared and we entered into a realm of just soulless dead cringe fuck off knockoffs ah it is it is startling to watch because again, for all of the flaws of My Little Pony, it is so much better than the next generation. It is hilarious. Like, it is cold water dunked in your face like shocking. Where you go from one thing and then you watch the other and you go, wow, this is so much worse. <laughs> God help me. God fucking help me. God help me indeed. Let's go back to the hot blonde woman. There you go. Much better. Much better. Especially, like, it's particularly jarring because it's it's the same show, right? It's the same style with the, the little ponies. It's kind of got the same ideas, like friendship is magic, blah, blah, blah. And you just see the qualitative decrease. And it is... I wish there was another example. I wish we had, like, Buffy and then modern Buffy so that you could watch them side by side and just be like, my Jesus, what happened? Uh, Zero Arch, tell the Zoomers about early 2000 games. Well, see, the easiest way to disprove uh, Dev's ludicrous assertion that 2000 wasn't the best gaming year in all of video gaming is to literally just, like, bring up the list, right? And suddenly, you're looking at The Sims, which is one of the biggest video games ever, and was a really cool idea at the time. These days, it's just gay things for women, but the original idea, great. Deus Ex, the single best RPG ever created, bar none. Diablo 2, the best action RPG ever created, bar none. You've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, an excellent game in his own right, okay? Uh, you even got a release for Final Fantasy. You've got Majora's Mask for the fucking disgusting Nintendo cocks, right? You've got Sacrifice. Uh, where is it? Oh, God, where is Sacrifice? There's Sacrifice. There's Sacrifice. The best video game ever made Service is Sacrifice. It is shit. the single best video game ever created. It is the best strategy game by a mile, and it, it, it is the best game. It is the, the best game ever. The singularly finest Service video game achievement that nothing will ever top. Counter-Strike, another one of the most popular fucking games ever. Thief 2, another very popular game. Age of Empires 2, the Conqueror's expansion, another excellent expansion. Like, the entire year of 2000 was just hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. And they weren't just hits either. They were industry-defining hits, right? Service guaranteed citizenship. They, they were the titles that the entire genres would be defined by forever. That was the year 2000. That's why the year 2000 was the absolute pinnacle of the golden age of video gaming. The absolute unquestioned pinnacle of it. No question. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. Mm, now I managed to lose my window. How does one achieve this? El Zorana, 20 bucks for a live art reaction of Dragon Saints, a Godsman Life animated music video. 
her, no, 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 no. Reaction videos are cringe. Reaction videos are fucking cringe. I'm a document. Free channel idea to anyone that cares. Make your channel to teach the old lessons of entertainment and the new ones we learned along the way. There's already plenty of those, honestly. There, there already are. Uh, Alex Adamson, I watched the Move Live anime. It was pretty damn good. I've heard the anime's good. I watched a couple of them. I had a fuse to watch the um, the actual Move Live anime. I have only watched the other retellings because I do not want in the memory of Move Live to even to even potentially be solid in my mind. And Zero Final Water Ironwood was a good counter, but was done dirty. Also, more Power Wash Simulator. The conversations were great. I cannot believe they were not demonetized. I taught... Okay. At the beginning of the third Power Wash stream, I was hungry, but I didn't realize I was hungry. So I sat down thinking, I'll be fine. I'll start playing, and I'll have a snack afterwards, right? And then my brain just started short-circuiting. And I start talking about the most retarded shit. And at some point, I'm, th I'm, I'm, I'm there like, you know, monkeys have really powerful grip strength, and that would probably make them really good at giving hand jobs. But then I start thinking, but monkeys also have really good grip strength. And monkeys are dumb. So probably, if a monkey were to try to jerk you off, it wouldn't actually jerk you off. It would just grab your dick and go, like, ooh, ooh, and crush your penis. So maybe monkeys aren't very good at having hand jobs. And I think I discussed this for about 30 fucking minutes until realizing I'm hungry. I need... I need sugar to stop. I must cease. And, despite that, that, that video is still monetized. None of my Archcast videos ever get monetized, but that shit gets fucking monetized. YouTube looks at that and nods its head. He brings up some excellent points there. Maybe we shouldn't train monkeys to jerk people off. Maybe there's a lawsuit in there somewhere. I talked about the, the DC horse brothel that got shut down because it fucking killed a guy because horse conks aren't actually very sensitive. You know, they're, they're not good for that kind of use because they are actually rather dangerous because your internal organs don't actually react well to being rammed by an enormous fucking dick. YouTube doesn't care. YouTube is fine with all of this. All of this is, f all of this is okay for YouTube. Not a problem. I even explained by rationale why you can't teach the monkey to just jerk you off gently, because a monkey doesn't understand any of this. I used the banana explanation. Uh, I think maybe what we need to do is just, like, have a random noise in the background. I think that was what saved me. Since there was the constant brrrr of the power washer, YouTube couldn't actually scan my words as correctly anymore, and so it didn't hear anything. It, it didn't hear about the DC horse brothel. It didn't hear about the monkey dick. It heard about none of that whatsoever. And just monetized me. So maybe that's what I'm going to do from now on. Just load up farm sim, make sure I'm nice and hungry at the beginning, and go on. And yes, RT is getting a little bit hungry now, actually. <laughs> You're correct, chat. I am getting a little bit peckish. I notice. I... I would probably not do well in a survival situation, I've come to realize, because the hungrier I get, the faster I seem to burn energy speaking. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. Not ideal. Hello, V. Busting through super chats? Yep, I've just basically finished. Oh, I wanted to keep you company because I know you hate doing them alone and Dev usually goes take a shit by the end of the stream. Yep, Dev left to do his, uh, his own stream. Thank you for the sentiment, though, but we are just about finished. Yeah. How is your do day you being? Do you want to find an interesting observation about Boogie? Uh, he's fat? No, no, no. You know, you know what he says um, that he doesn't like um, the fact that games are saying white people bad, right? Yep. You know, they're doing the exact same shit um, we went through in 2014 when you would say that we just don't want video games to be political. And instead of like them going after the spirit of what we're saying, instead of actually going to what we mean by that, they, they will do this word analysis 
where, where they will say, but what is political, right? Like the Witcher is political. And if the Witcher is political, then we can have a video game where uh, the white MAGA guy just beats up a kid and says that we need to build a wall and all that shit. This is exactly what they're doing now. It's like, they're not saying, um, <clears throat> like when they're asking, it's like, can you give me an example of a game where the white person is bad? You're not going to find a video game where you have like a character go up on a podium and say, uh, all, all white people are bad. But you're going to see like all these developers just talk about how they don't want to hire white people or talk about how it's a problem because the main character is white or remove mods that make a character white, but promote mods that make all characters black. Yep. And uh, Dev did actually manage to find an example of that. Uh, the my This Land is My Land, where you Hell play as the Indians and White Man Bad. Fire is the answer. Yep. <laughs> And, and no, yeah, and you are entirely correct too, because they're gonna maliciously interpret it. Are you saying that all video games are white man bad? That's ridiculous. And yes, yes, when you build that straw man, it is indeed Service ridiculous. But everyone else knows what Boogie meant. But the problem is, <laughs> Boogie doesn't have a following of gamers anymore. <laughs> like no. Boogie's, Boogie's not a relevant person, and so the only people that dunk on him are the people that look at him and think like, "Well, this is easy clout." I, I would say that when it comes to video games, um, they don't really have the white man bad agenda. They do have the remove women agenda. Yes. Um, white man bad is in Netflix. Uh, you, you get more of that in TV Fire shows. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Actually, have you played um, uh, Rogue Trader, the Owlcat yeah. game? I think you said you played yeah. Pathfinder, right? Yeah. Um, have you noticed in Rogue Trader, every single attractive woman is evil? I did not. The uh, the first the uh, the planetary governor uh, you meet on in chapter like two, uh, she's pretty, and the the game describes her as beautiful. She turns out to be a chaos cultist. Um, another character. Don't spam me. Don't spam me. Don't spam. Okay, yeah. but I get but it. yes. Yeah. The uh, well, every every time though. you see a hot woman, she's a chaos cultist. Yeah. Basically, I I don't mind that. I don't mind that. That's fine. Uh, like what I do mind is when all of the women look like abominations from Californian. You know, they, they have, like, the Portsmouth in smooth look. The, the Portland in smooth look, you know? The, and they go body type A, body type B. They, they create, like, these this figured monstrosities pumped with testosterone, and they, they say it's body type B. Like, that that's what I'm talking about. They do do that. I, I, yeah, I don't care if beautiful women are villains. Like, that's fine. Yeah, but when every beautiful woman is a villain... Don't you have, like, that chica, that sororitas that joins you in the beginning? Yeah, but you can't bang her. Mm -hmm. she's, she's literally celibate. <laughs> like, the most attractive uh, female you can bang is probably the Navigator, and she's a mutated freak. The thing that I really liked about Pathfinder is that you had so many waifus. You had Aroya uh, You had... I, even the Paladin chick, like, she had an interesting personality and character arc. Yep. Um, e even, even the serial killer was fucking hot. She was great. I loved her. Mm. And, and even though, like, that one was non-bangable, uh, but, but she was like, you just wanted to protect her. Uh, the elf. I forgot her name. Like, she was so good. Uh, oh, in... yes. The, uh, the, 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 yes. I, I know who you're talking about. It's so fucking rare to, to play an RPG when there's so many interesting characters. Because usually you have, like, one or two interesting characters. But, like, that one, even the gnome, what, what the was question. his name? The the, uh, yes. the gnome black guard. I loved him, too, yeah. He was just absolutely fucking really amazing. Like, every single time he was in a cutscene, he would just steal the show. Yep, they were all great. Uh, the, um, the Spider-Woman yes. from the Underworld, she was pretty cool. I didn't really like her, but I, 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 she did have an interesting character arc. I'll give her that. The ones I did, like, so, uh, Wolgif, I never warmed to. Uh, the Paladin Social, I always kind of hated. He felt like the, <laughs> he, he felt like the resident gay guy. Mm. The thing is, and, and this is my point, um, you're saying that their character the building question. has Fire just completely answer. dropped in, in Rogue Trader. <laughs> Like, they don't make interesting characters like that. They do. There are still good quests, but they have gotten a little bit more weird with it. Like, yet every every attractive character 
is evil and your most beautiful companion character is non-romanceable. It's like, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, God, like, like this is the thing in gaming, right? Um, and, and by the way, there, there's another example that Dev should have given. Uh, there are there used to be certain games that you couldn't make a white character at all. Um, one of them was uh, Mass Effect Andromeda when the game released. If you wanted to play a white guy, it, you, only the default male character. Everything else was brown. Shades. Do you brown. remember that? Yep. Yeah, and do, the do Harry, po that? Harry Potter mod. Yeah, and then the, it was Harry Potter, which uh, you couldn't play as a Norwegian. Like if you if you wanted like a, a bleach white skin, you couldn't do that. And again, like these are done on purpose. Like in order, because now that I'm making my own game, I realize how this thing works. Like you need approval from different teams, and you have like at least ten people just looking at it. And while you're creating the game, like everyone is looking at it. And the fact that no one just brings it up, it's like, hey, I can't make a white character with this editor. What gives? And and you know, like you know for a fact that if the opposite was true, like if you couldn't make a black character, like a, just like a charcoal dark african type person you would have the journalists lose their minds over it they would say oh this game is racist because the the character doesn't let the, the character creator doesn't let you do this doesn't let you play the the, the correct uh race and blah 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 yep you got another red super chat after i came here From Noah. Where's the super chat window? Uh, Adoman, 2000 video games was pretty good. They were. Elsie Serana, 20 more for the live, live reaction. How long can you say no? For a very long time. Reaction videos are cringe. I can't. Uh. Uh, Noah off, $50. Thank you very much, sir. Here you go. Here's some takeout money. You underestimate the prices of Norwegian takeout. <laughs> no, that probably will actually get me takeout. What does a pizza cost in Romania, V? It depends on the quality, but you Like a good one. Um, I think like $10. Hmm. So about half of the Norwegian price. Yeah, like, like food is cheap here, but like uh, it, it's like Tucker Carlson going to Russia and it's like, oh my god, everything is cheap here. And it's like, yeah, people earn less, dumbass. Yep, it's a cheap country. Boog, hey, ask V. Centora or Celestia? <laughs> Which is better? Celestia is the one that gives you a boner and looks like an actual human, right? Uh, Centoria is a centaur. Uh, mm -hmm. She's from Monster Girl. Ah. Uh, yeah. And Celestia is the My Little Pony, yeah? Yes, correct. But the My Little Pony one can transform into a human woman, right? Can she? Yeah, she she's pretty much like God, isn't she? Yes, she is basically God. Right, I don't well, even then, know if the ponies yeah. have a concept of humans, but no, I guess she probably could. Yeah, they do. They do. They they have like the spin-off. It's called the uh, Equestra, and they all have like teenage forms. Well, uh, knowing Boog, I'm betting you he's he's talking about her in her pony form. So if you had to choose between Centauria or Celestia, which one? Well, gee, I don't know what the morality on Twitter is anymore because she may be but a child. And and if you lust after a drawing of an equestrian, which is not carbon dated adequately, you get canceled on Twitter. I'm pretty sure her lore is like she's 5,000 years old or something. You know, she may be minor coded. <laughs> Look, Arch, it's all about I think about you're Del making Gaze, excuses. Right? V, which it's horse would Del you rather have sex with? <laughs> Uh, Heresy's the question. Uh, no, I, I generally like that answer. it's the horses, but <laughs> if I was forced to pick, I think like Celestia looks less than a horse because it's like cartoon drawn. So there we go. All right, Celestia wins. Which one would you pick? Uh, I, ha <laughs> I had this discussion previously. Um, hmm. Hmm. I mean, if you're if you're committed to fucking a horse, which you are, because they both have horse back ends, right? If yeah, you're like committed, one is like more animated, one is like more cartoony, and the other one is like more realistic, I guess. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're fucking a horse's ass. So at that point, 
I too think I have to go with Celestia because one, she's smaller, uh, which means her she's more manageable. So Tora is like two hundred kilograms or something, and she's mm. enormously tall. And two, uh, Celestia has magic. Centauria does not. Well, that is a good point. Yes, yeah, so we're we're forced to to remain with Celestia. Yep, I'm I'm sorry. Like the, the when you when you're fucking a horse's ass anyway, um, whether or not the front part is vaguely human shaped or not, it's it's almost irrelevant at that point. You've you've sunk about as low as you can. Do you think we would compete with Vosh for Celestia's affection? I don't know. I, I feel like Celestia might be repulsed by communists. Hmm. Didn't they have like an episode where they're promoting equality and stuff? Yep, and uh, the uh, the main character was the evil one, the char the communist character, and then she goes through a lengthy redemption arc where she learns that no, communism is not the answer. The communists have the power of friendship arch because like they they go comrade this, comrade that, and and they may actually fit in the My Little Pony universe, which has the magic of friendship. No, uh, actually, the the communist episode uh, talked about this, and they came down conclusively that communism is not friendship and is not magic. So there, there you go. That's pretty based. God, I need to see the episode. <laughs> communism is not bad. Well, the, the, well, look, look, look. You you literally had like this woman in, in the U.S. Uh, saying that she wants the whole place to burn down so that her ideology can be rebuilt from the ashes. And I was saying like, these people believe communism is magic. It's like you destroy something and through the magic of communism, it gets rebuilt. <laughs> and my little pony debunks that. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> The best part is actually, so the plot line is uh, Starlight Glimmer, which is the pony's name. <laughs> I'm researching MLP right now for my yearly MLP lore video. It's what's the year MLP now? Yep. And so she, she introduces the concept of equality. So she takes away all of the pony's cutie marks, which are their little magical bullshit thingies that tells them what they're good at. And it replaces them with an equality symbol. Uh, but guess what? Plot twist. She never replaced her cutie mark. She only pretended to because she's the commissar. She's the secret commissar. But that's so fucking fake. Oh my god. And then she has Did to go to, uh, to friendship school to be taught that no, communism is actually shit. You're not allowed. Do you know that uh, my artist, uh, the one I, I hired for my video game, is deep into the MLP fandom. A and he is very upset that the new MLP, they call it like Generation, so I, I don't know what, Generation 4 or something, is woke? I don't even know if it's woke. See, okay. The thing I'm, I'm looking into is if celestia was basically just evil and set the universe up to fail after she decided to leave which she probably did honestly and so i had to look at the the new one and jesus the qualitative drop between like the main old school one and the new one is enormous I, they 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 have terrible MLP, for all of its faults, is a nice show in that it's just old school cartoons, right? It tries to teach it, you a lesson. Is, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. Fire is the Any answer. person that doesn't like MLP, you are guaranteed to like the songs. Like, the songs are fucking dope. They're like old Disney songs. Old Disney songs. Yeah. The, don't you agree? Like, the songs are amazing? I don't find them that good, but they're a whole lot better than the, one, the new ones. Hmm. And the new show is just garbage. Like, it's really, really, really bad. And coming directly from one to the other, it is jarring how much worse it got. Why do you think that is? Like, didn't they sell the toys or what happened? Uh, they probably was because they tried to make it diverse. Like, the new, the new show is way more diverse. It had a diverse cast of voice actors, diverse cast of characters, blah, 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 blah. So it is woke. It is, but it doesn't really talk about wokeness at all. It doesn't really push an agenda. It's just more like behind the scenes woke. So what does like uh, have to do with the quality? I mean, okay, like are the voice actors not as good? Is it like the the artists not as good? Like all of why, it. Why would like all, all of, of it? Hmm. 
Uh, Do you think that uh, in the future has been hotel, which is often compared to like the success of MLP, like a lot of bronies are now into has been hotel. Do you think like that in the future is going to become um, diverse? Possibly. Uh, I'll send you here this. So this is the art style for the new one, right? And tell me, oh they look like Aren't fucking they? pigs, don't they? They do look like pigs. You know, you know who they look like? Uh, Miss Piggy from Muppets. Don't they fucking just like they? They took. They look like, yeah. They took a pretty good art style, and they were like, "How? What if? What if they look more like pigs?" Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's. The uh, not going to fuck that. You know, there there's an entire community, an entire like websites after websites of Rule Forty Four or whatever it's called, Forty Three, right? And they're not going to tap that. No, they're not. They're not, as it turns out. Because it's interesting, like, the show was initially made for young girls, but it found a very niche and devout audience of 45 year old something men. It did. It did indeed. And, and those men, turns out, they have money. And they were purchasing the merchandise. They were. The young girls weren't. No. Oh. Oh, nice, my little pony. It's just like. I don't, I don't know. Like the West just doesn't like money printing machines. Like every single time they find something pretty money, they, they they're like, "Oh, let's let's talk about morality." By the way, um, are you familiar with Nike? Yes. Right. Did you know they they have that chick from Res Zero? They uh, they added um, one of those Oni girls, the one the one with the horn. Heresy is the question. Yes. Mm, Fire yeah. is the yeah, answer. Yeah. <laughs> They, they, uh, apparently their sales went off through the roof because a lot of people are telling me oh well that game is a gacha game and because it's a gacha game that's why it sells because it's gambling and it's like no motherfucker it, it sells because they actually listen to the fans like let me show you a picture here you go this is now in the fucking game oh uh, re-zero that stuff yeah. yes y yeah yeah no like this is uh, it's collaboration stuff and it's it's very useful because you take a character with an established fan base, then you put them in the game, you give people a few voice lines from them, you give them a cute little model, and have them go like, Oni-chan, and people buy it up. Yeah. Because of like course. I, I said, you know, if, if I were to, to create my own consultancy firm, it would be like the dude bro consultancy firm, and I would go to video games, and I would be like, you need fat tits, like big, big fat tits, and guns. Big fat tits, some asses, and it's like they say they already have tits. I'm like, no, they're not fat enough. More, more fat tits, and, and then the game just starts printing money like crazy. Doesn't matter what game. I, I don't care. No morality. Oh, but it's a guy. Oh, but she's but a chat. No, like big fat tits. What do you not understand? Like Powerpuff Girls, big fat tits, and guns. Or but they have ma and guns. Big fat asses. That was the Nikki's entire thing. The the booty shakes. Yes, the booty, booty shakes, shakes with it, the it recoil. Needs, it needs to vibrate like jelly. Like right? jelly. When, when she fires the gun, it needs to see the vibrations on the thick ass. And but then they print money. Boobies, yeah. boots, uh, bo boobs. <laughs> Booties don't work like that. I don't care. You <laughs> know what it does? <laughs> money dancer. works like that. Yeah, money works like that. It, the, the moment, like someone said, V's world would be so debased and cartoonish. Yes, but I would be rich. Right, and you can complain about your morality from down below as I sit on my hordes of money. Like I, I will have like a throne, just just filled with cash, you know. And you little peasant going up there, oh, but she's a, just a child. She's a. I will sit there looking at you. It's like what, what, what is that? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I just. Oh, but it's sex is a misogyny. I, 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 I just can't hear it. I just can't hear it. The, the money is too high, too high, and you're all the way down there. Does your game have big fat tits, Arch? Not yet. But it will, right? Maybe. It does have dummy you know, mummies, though. You should, you should like the the humans. They they should have like posters for military recruitment, with with big fat tits and guns. Now that it will have. Uh, Alex Adams and I say definitely watch the anime. It is great. I shall consider it. Zero. V, we are missing the early 2000 games. We are. Uh, Elsie Serrano. Arch, no, Argenta isn't evil. Mm. Mm, we'll see. 
Alex Anderson, Arch, you should play War on the Sea on stream. Maybe. I, do, I have too many stream games right now. I'll sit on 20 more. Time to give in. You're not going to get me to make reaction videos. I cannot be made to make reaction videos. I hate reaction videos. I you want to make a reaction video together, Arch? Mm, no. Hate reaction videos. I think you did a reaction video with Kibbs. Mm, reaction videos gay. What does that say about Kibbs? That he's gay? What a horrible thing to say. No, he's gay. He's a legitimate homosexual. There's, there's no doubt about this anymore. He just likes big fat tits. Come on. No. It, it, he's never admitted to this. Ever. But when I show him stuff from my game, he, he gives like the, the thumbs up emoji. Yeah, but he would prefer it if you send him... Like, send him a big fat cock pic and see if you get the same reaction. I bet you will. Dankula's testicles? Yeah, um, try I was talking with Count Dankula, and he gave me a picture of his scrotum. I don't know why, to this day. I don't know what they mean or why they're there, but I think I have them somewhere. So maybe I can send those to Kibbs. Do. He'll like it. He's weird like that. You know what? I'll ask him. Well, hold on. Kibbs, are you a homosexual? I, I need to know. <laughs> a guy under a bridge says, There's game called For Honor, where you play various knights, samurais, etc. You can have a black samurai, a black viking, a black knight, but the Egyptians and Aztec hero, Deep Tan, is the lightest it gets. Weird. Strange. And Weird says, Princess Molestia is the spin-off we deserve. And I saw that comment, so I prepared Princess Molestia for chat. I don't know much about Princess Molestia, but judging by the name, I'm relatively sure I can uh, come up with an citizenship. educated guess, shall we say. Black917 has been a member for 15 months. Thank you very much. Hey, Large Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hi, V. Good to see you back. Citizenship. And guest appearance. Uh, Zero V, when is your game coming out? Uh, hopefully this year. Service guarantees citizenship. Uh, Gabriel Nartier, for the D&D campaign of Sargon, did you discuss the setting in detail before starting, or are you discovering it as you go? Well, I was under the impression I was going to be a priestess of Helm, which is why my character is rather strident, so... We did get told some of it. A little, a little bit of both, I would say, yeah. Uh, zero, Nikki causes inflation in many ways, yes. I actually said that on my channel, yes. Like, Nikkei is like uh, the, the, the Fed. It just causes inflation by existing. Isn't it sad that all that money goes to South Korea? Like, all that money could have gone to the United States, but nay. <laughs> nay. Nay. Driving... So in Komi LMLP, who's the Bronies Beria? Ah, was there one? I think it was only Starlight Glimmer, actually. He used her mind-washing powers to turn Heresy everyone into supporters. Fire is the answer. <laughs> uh, Elsie Sorana, you once said you could be bought to do cringe things for 100. I've already given 60. Here's 100. Are you a man of your word? <sighs> God damn it. But I don't want to do a react video. By the way, I saw I saw your um your short it was a very good short. Uh, it, it talked about global warming and um, what damn it was the name? Uh, Terra Invicta. Ah yes, global warming. When you can fix global warming by new King Iceland. You can. Ironically, you can. You think that would work in real life? Probably, but it wouldn't work for very long because um. Uh. The reason why it works in Terra Invicta is because it simulates er, uh, like dirt being aerosolized and kicked up into the atmosphere, mm. uh, blocking the sun's rays. So wow. eventually it would clear out. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't work for very long, basically. But can't you nook again when it clears out? Well, you probably can, but I'm imagining the fallout eventually gets a bit annoying. Did they upgrade that game? Because I remember um, when when I was playing, it was very well, uh, the the Earth part of the game was very uh, bare bones. They have 
updated it quite a bit. So the the core gameplay remains quite slow, though. So hmm. one of the problems that I had is that uh, if you had the nation, you couldn't just declare war and conquer another nation. You can, uh, so long as you have a claim on it, but you must have a claim on whatever you're getting. Yeah, like, from what I got, is like, you can make the European Union an empire. Um, if you're China, you can lay claims. If you're Russia, you can lay claims to the Soviet Union. Um, China also has, like, the Asian unification thing. Yes. You can create super states, but uh, only if you manage to get the... Correct claims and rationales Here's for it. Fire is the Can answer. you uh, <laughs> destroy a faction? Because I remember that was a problem. Like there, there were people that um, like would completely decimate another faction, and they can still just pop up, and it was annoying. Yep, you can't wipe out factions even now. Someone, Which is like, had a had a way to do it. It's like with assassinations and just leaving one country so that faction would take that country and then they would assassinate the operative the next turn i don't know about that maybe i know there were some exploits that you could do to more or less neutralize a faction mm. and speaking of factions i don't know if you still follow but the dune game has house x as a faction now of course it does is it led by a black woman i don't i, I don't think so wow that's unusual House X. Let's see. Because they announced one where they decided to race swap. They can't help themselves, Arch. I mean, they discover how to splice the human uh, genome and make superior characters. So that's like, no, why they're no. not black. They're Asian. Ah, they're di they're diverse in another way. I see. Thing is, Arch. Look, look. If you're a storyteller, the what better story Fire is, is the there answer. to tell besides <laughs> race swapping a character? That is the question of our current year, and nobody seems to have come up with a solution to it. And every time that it's something popular that sells, like they don't do this with stuff that doesn't sell, right? Like they they won't go to my game and say, "Hey V, why don't you have like a brown sakubasu?" Uh -huh. No, they they go to Shogun. Fucking Shogun, which is like one of the more popular things on Netflix because it's authentic, right? Oh my god, uh, everyone just wants to see white people, and yeah, that's why everyone watches Shogun. And the, the the journalists are, but why aren't there black people in Shogun? Actually, I would like a brown succubus in your game, B. I I like brown succubus. I like brown girls. Brown girls DLC, are good. Because it's a requested, yeah, it's a requested feature. I, I may give that in DLC, that's fine. Just so you guys know, Arch has pushed for diversity in my video game. I have. Uh, Ethan Rogers, counterpoint. Blue Archive is super popular and successful while being the Cunny game, provi proving its more unsafe appeal. It sells not just the TNA. You know what happened to my little witch Nobleta? No. What happened? So my little wish Nobleta, I genuinely thought that it's uh, like a lolly game. But no, apparently it, it's like complete safe for work, right? Like just 100%. But like the, the, the game is called, you, you play like these little, Heresies uh, very little Fire witches. Is the answer. <laughs> uh, so, so they started memeing. Um, it's like, you like my witch Nobleta because of the aesthetics. We like it before because of the cunny. And this is what the developer themselves have said. Like they posted this on Twitter, right? Uh, and it caused such a massive meltdown uh, amongst like the the antis and and all the progressives and the pronoun pushers. Uh, so so they went on their server, uh, their Discord server, posting vile stuff and then reporting it to get it shut down. Of and course. my little wish Nobleta just made another server, so they're persevering. But but like the the thing that I'm pointing is that uh, first of all they're massively successful. Like this made them sell even more. Uh, and secondly, it's like riding the meme all the way to success. Yep. And it's also one of the primary selling points of these games is just to give people what they want. And often people want different things. There's no such thing as the perfect tomato sauce, only perfect tomato sauces. And that's why um, Blue Archive added in 
a a little blonde girl who's just a little bit chubby. She who just has a little bit of chub, and she became super popular because people are like, yes, I would like a little bit of chub, please. That's the beauty what of these that? games. You can. What what character is that that you just posted? I'll link it to you. That's the one. That's the popular one. Oh. And she's just a little chubby. And if you've got a game with loads of characters, add a little bit of everything. Most people will want the hot, teasing schoolgirl. Okay, sure. Then some will want the big-titted Onesan. Okay, sure. And just give them everything. That way you maximize sales. You know what I noticed that the West doesn't have? It's, it's not just, like, attractive women. It's cute and wholesome. We yep. do not have any more characters in the West that are cute or wholesome. Like, for instance, Tali Zora Vas Normandy was cute and wholesome. It is because yeah, exactly. we can't have a cute and wholesome anymore. We, uh, the yeah. West needs to sexualize it. We can't have everything, a cute and wholesome. Yes, everything is resting bitch face. It's a man. Everything. Mm. I, I I really looked at, at like the last female characters in video games, and, and even uh, Angry Baba from from God of War, the the black, even she is not wholesome. Like like all the women are mean spirited. Uh, they, they have like this this uh, selfish attitude. Um, they just cannot make a wholesome character. They don't want to because they don't know what wholesome is. They don't fucking know what wholesome is. Yes. They used to have cute characters, like Supergirl Heresy's was cute, right? Like she, she had Fire the cute face. The answer. <laughs> um, th there used to be Black Canary, uh, Black Canary from DC Comics, also cute, but they they just don't make them cute anymore. So, did you know that McDonald's released a new anime commercial, but this time around they banned it in the West? Which is probably the smart thing to do. Why? Like, you want the commercial to be seen by the most amount of people. Yes, but he wanted it to be viewed by the most amount of people who are interested in watching it. See, that's the thing. Getting seen is not the, not the objective anymore. You need positive attention. That's the difficult part. And the Japanese have realized that the Americans are far too sensitive. And so they're just going to advertise to the Japanese market. Oh, no, come on. There was more positivity for the wholesome commercial than the negativity. But, like, the there thing was, is, but for a company, any negativity is bad. Like, for, for a company like McDonald's... Now they get more negativity. Now, now they actually get negativity, right? Because the thing is like this, right? Well, why do you advertise as McDonald's? Because everyone knows what McDonald's is. Like, like no one that, that's in the West now goes like, oh, what, what is this brand? No, the reason you advertise for McDonald's is because you show the burger and people, you know, get that craving, right? Like, if you like McDonald's, you're like, oh, I, I, I could really use a bug on that now, right? So, so the, the, the McDonald's Japan did exactly that. It's like people talk about McDonald's that they want to go and have a burger, whatever. Now that they did this, everyone in the West is pissed off. Now they're getting actual negativity. Because before it was like a couple of weirdos on Twitter and no one could actually say, oh, well, McDonald's Japan is doing a bad thing. Now, they are trending for all the wrong reasons. And people are like, shame on you. You know, you, you, like, like, we know what you're doing. Um, so, yeah. It's about maintaining brand visibility. And for a company like that, it, it's not even about just getting you to want the burger. It is about keeping a positive image. They, they can't have a negative image. They got to continuously be viewed as a positive force. That's why they do the stupid charity stuff, for example. Like, the company doesn't care, but it's very nice to put their brand on charity thing. Well, usually they, they also get tax deductible. That too. Uh, Black917 says, where are her organs? That is a good question, <laughs> says the Wokeland Whale. Exactly where they're supposed to be is the correct response. Boog Arch did not watch Equestria Girls. He missed lore. Equestria Girls is not canon. I, I, I don't accept it. I do not accept it. Uh, Blaze Stone, 50 Canadians. No idea what it is about, but Torturing Arch is the sport for chat, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, here's 50 to force you to do reaction video. Reacting to what? No idea. Took it in a break and missed that part, lol. 
all right, all right, all right. Here, here we go. Show me one that's cute and wholesome. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, and, and if you can show the chat, maybe people in the chat can. But like, all of these are from major titles that came out. Like, I'm not cherry picking them or anything, right? All right, let's reload it. They all look like men, don't they? Like ninety oh, percent of them. Ugly men. Yeah. Well, one looks like um, what's her name? Um, the how dare you chick? The the Greta Thunberg, yeah. My fucking god, this is this is so ugly, isn't it? Holy shit! Like when you put them side by side, Jesus fucking Christ. The closest one would be the bottom middle, uh, the, the bottom row in the middle. The uh, Latino chick. She looks decent enough, you know, that's okay. It's fucking sad that this is like what we consider good now. Because like ba back in the 90s, you would never pick this. It's like, what are you talking about? It is good enough for the current year. Like, look how good the motion capture artists look like. Right? Look, look how great the, the, the actresses that, that did the mocap look versus the Californian Innsmouth look that, that comes into the video game. Like, yeah, look at Mary Jane. Look at Mary Jane. Look at the fucking model. Holy shit. Mary Jane has been treated like particularly it. poorly. Poor Mary Jane. God. It would be a crime. And, and, and the Diablo, the Diablo, it's a man. Holy shit. Like the the one underneath Greta Thunberg, the 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 one with the uh, the Spartan shit. Jesus Christ! And she used to be a hot waifu in the original Diablo. Like when I played Diablo remake, the first thing I did, Arch, the first thing was like to find a helmet for her. The thing is, too, Mary Jane is an excellent example of a character that used to be cute and wholesome. Because Mary Jane's entire thing was that she was the hot girl next door. Yes. And she never had eyes for anyone but Peter. The, the whole thing with, with Spider-Man, right? It, it's a story for the weenie. Because you're the weenie, right? Like, you, you get beaten up at school, you get bullied at school... Your heart is in the right place, but, like, you can't do anything. And there's this hot girl next door that you're too afraid to talk to her. You, you lack the confidence to speak with her. And then you meet her at school, right? And, and, and as he gets the powers, which basically translates to who goes through puberty. This is what the, the author intended with, like, with great powers come great responsibility, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he then starts to become a man. And, and as a man, he has to defend others and, and he has to do the right thing. And that's when the girl gets interested in him. And, and that's why it's not representation, but it's relatability. Because every kid related to Spider-Man in the beginning. Like, almost everyone was bullied at school. You know, that, that red comics, all the geeks were Heresy's getting bullied at school. And, and everyone knows what it's like to be weak. <laughs> And not to be able to do anything you want because, like, others are going to bully you for it. Uh, and, and everyone knows how it's like to have a crush and to have a... right. So, so like, that comic book spoke to you whether you were Latin, whether you were Norwegian, whether you were from Mexico, right? And now what do you have? You have a collection of extraordinarily ugly women. In all of your video <laughs> games, in all of your comics, in all of your entertainment. They will say, oh, so what if they're ugly? And it's like, beauty is on the inside. And it's like, wait until you actually learn about their characters. Like, like their personality is rotted as well. There were some none of these. None of these characters are likable. Like, for instance, Tali Zora, right? Like, Tali Zora, I don't even get to see her face, but she has such an uh, awesome personality that, that she became top-tier waifu. Kara Zora um, is just cute. Yes. Her personality of cuteness is what attracts. But, like, none of these women are, are anything. Like, like um, it reminds me of the... What, what was her name? The, the one from Invincible, right? Oh, my gosh, she's so fucking insufferable. 
Uh, she's like, me, 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 me. The same with uh, the, the other chick from He-Man. It's like He-Man dies, right? She's in front of his parents. And everyone finds out that the son of Edinia was He-Man. And, 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 you know, like the parents are shocked. And they're also taking the news that their son died. And she's like, but what about me? What about my feeling? He lied to me. He didn't tell me he was He-Man. It's like, no one thinks of me. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, dude, who would want that? Like, you are He-Man. You can have any bitch you want from the entire fucking kingdom. Like, like you're the prince, right? You, you can literally be... And not only you're the prince, you, you look just like, like He-Man, right? He, he can literally seduce any woman he wants. Just, just any woman. And he goes for the most ugly, most mean-spirited, most evil and twisted bitch in the kingdom. And it's like, it, it just breaks immersion. Like, there is no fucking way. That a man like He-Man would choose her as his girlfriend. Unless he's under a gun. Unless they have like arranged marriages in that kingdom. Uh, unless he's like forced, compelled <laughs> to like her. He has his princely duties, you must understand. <laughs> That's the only explanation where it would make sense. Uh... Alice Adamson asks, you should put all the games you want to play on, on stream in a list and do a vote on the community page. Chat is God. It chooses. It's entertainment. Oh my God, Arch. Okay, well, okay. Sure. Chat, chat, you will love this. Arch, are you going to buy Sea of Thieves? The video game coming up. Sea of Thieves coming out? That's ancient, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Okay, are you, going to, are, are you going to purchase it now? See if the isn't it fucking free to play or something? Look, you're ruining my fucking joke. Okay, they added something that will make you really excited about this game. Did they? I, yes, I will read the title. Listen to this: Meet Marley, Sea of Thieves NPC reveals to be trans. Oh, trans great. delighted, all three of them. Well, that's fantastic for Sea of Thieves. I know, right? Oh my god, I can't wait to get off this Archcast so I can play the game. Holy shit, I'm so excited. I'm downloading it right now. Can you imagine this? A trans character in the video game, Sea of Thieves. Wow, like, they, they, the developers just reached into my brain. They look at what I wanted. Like, they, they know what I covered. And now I just can't help myself. I'm looking for my wallet. I hope I have enough cash so I can give something to them. It's uh, fantastic. What, a, what an amazing news, Arch. But they've got trans representation in Dead by Daylight now, too. Oh, I love that. Oh, my fucking God, that controversy. Holy shit. Did you see, uh, what was the name? Rick? Nick? Like that uh, YouTube influencer, which uh, is disabled. And he, he makes, like, very funny videos. I did not. Oh, gosh. He, he made the meme. He made the post. And he got into a lot of controversy because of it. Let's see if I can find it. As you do when I you think... make cute things. Yeah, he, he, he deleted it, damn. But, uh, yeah, so, like, uh, the voice actor uh, who, who played the, the, the character in, in the horror game... Uh, didn't like the, the visage, I suppose, of how the character came out. So, uh, they're asking for reparations. <laughs> I, yes, yeah, I okay, did see I'll, that. I, I will show you the, uh, you, you can show this to chat. Now, some people say, <laughs> that, uh, well, actually, you know what? Maybe, maybe I should tell you after the Ashcast is over. Maybe. Uh, you know, only... fuck it. Uh, some people say that there is a, a, a small, very small um, resemblance uh, between the picture and, and the, the person. Um, very mean-spirited thing to say. But it is possible that the illustrator for the model decided to take the piss. Uh, is it? Let me see if I can find it. Because um, I, 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 I've been shown it. Like, when you see the voice actor, um, 
and and you're looking at the model some people have pointed out that maybe the person who drew the model was a little bit mean spirited <laughs> like I don't know, because the, the the twisted. I've seen the original of it, and the idea no, was the, original, it... the skin, the skin. We're talking about the the particular skin that I showed Service you. Guaranteed citizenship. Yeah, because the idea is that it takes on the the look of whomever it kills or something. Yes. Well, not not necessarily. It's yeah, the, the, not not from the players though. Service but... guaranteed citizenship. Uh, so hold on. Let me see if I can find the person, voice actor, the unknown. Mm. If anyone from the chat has it, please give it to me, because I, I saved it, but for some reason I deleted it. There is, there is some, some sort of um, reason why, why the, the person is, is upset, let's put it like this. Uh, none of the newspapers that uh, are reporting on this are, are showing the picture of the voice actor for, for some reason. Mm, a strong resemblance, I see. No, 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 no. It's, um... I mean, in certain lights from certain poses, you, you could see some accidental resemblance. But, no, oh, here we go. I found it. Okay. To be honest, it's, it's also the fact that the voice actor started talking about this because otherwise people wouldn't have looked. Service guarantees citizenship. Mm. Do, do you think? Do you think that the artist was was a little bit Harris of an asshole? Question. Fire is the answer. Like they, they <laughs> did this on purpose. Mm. Eh, it's not that much of a resemblance. A little bit, but not that much. Well, I didn't say it's a little bit, right? I didn't. I didn't say Paris it's it's a copy paste. Fire is oh, I, I found the Ricky Berwick uh, <laughs> beam, which uh, seems to to have gotten him in a little bit of a pickle. Um, here we go. Uh, his uh, his excuse was that he is colorblind. Ah, I did see this one. <laughs> yes. I mean, that is an accurate representation of reality. I, I googled Zoe Alexandria and I found Ludes. Um, this is not what... I just want to see a picture of... Well, Svi looks for pornography on the internet. I do not want to look for pornography on the internet. Ah, oh, okay, okay, Arch. All right, all right. Here we go. That's a lot. That's a much worse angle. Fire yes. is the answer. It is, it is right. So it, it 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 does require certain angles in order to to fully appreciate the resemblance. Yes. It, I I wouldn't say resemblance. I would say um, that the artist was an asshole. Who knows? We will never find out. <laughs> Please read the super chat. Back. Uh, Lord Comes a Spartan, a note for Little Witch No Better, the game has an official fanbox account that is remarkably cute and funny. LOL. Does it now? Uh, Dreyfi, mass e kinda into Jack, I am into that weird shit. I don't even know what that's referring to now. Uh, James Coon, will you play Mana Lords? And hello, Arch and V. I am intending to play Mana Lords, yes. When is it coming out? Mana Lords. I think it's... You, you, I, I finally realized what it is, Arch. What is it? It's the hair. It's the hair. It's a little bit the hair. It's long. It's the hair. Yeah, it's, it's the hairline, yes. Like, if you look at the hairline, that's, that's the issue. And a long neck. And a slightly long face.
I should go back to me. A domin so trans people are a sea of thieves. Hmm. Blaystone, so are you doing a reaction video now at 155 per peer pressure and counting? We'll, we'll, we'll do something with it. I'm just not... Oh, I'll come up with something. Uh, Zero, I think Kingdom Come was the last Western RPG that had cute, wholesome female characters. To be honest, the journals hated that game for many reasons. They did. Soul the Lich. Dead by Daylight monster is coming for your children. It wants to teach them not to hate. And Black 1917. If you want to see trans done right, watch Vandred. The chick who is a dude isn't revealed till close to the end of the series with no hint to the reveal at any point. I do remember that now that you mention it. The, the Vandred anime. So mm. none of the journalists ever ask the developers to stop harassing gamers. That's weird. Like, I've I, I seen the bitch boy, Short Fat Otaku, going around. It's like, oh my god, can we stop harassing people? <laughs> the journalists go like, hey, developers, can you stop harassing the gamers? Can you stop being castle pigs for five seconds? Hey, sweet baby ink, sweet baby Jesus, sweet baby Jesus, can you stop being castle pigs just for like five minutes? Leave Asma Gold alone. Shut the fuck up. Leave me alone. They never do that, do they? They don't. They don't. What do you think that is, Arch? Because they're highly partisan hacks. Do you think they do you think they masturbate to that? Like like when someone goes out of their way in order to harass a VTuber for playing Hogwarts, do you think a game journalist is like, oh yeah, that's the shit. Oh baby, better record it so I can watch it again next time I have the urge. They might. They honestly might. I do, I do think they, they yeah. No, I, I generally think they might. Yeah. Zero Five will ask V, why discriminate against flat girls? Well, you do actually have a reason for why there are no flat succubi, don't you? Okay, so if you look at Steam and their regulations, initially, it was like, if it's legal, you can have it on Steam. So any video game can be on Steam as long as it's legal, right? So like, no lolly shit. And, and most people agree. It's like, okay, fine. You know, they, they, it's easy to tell what a lolly is. So, so no prepubescent girl, fine. Then they went, actually, no, no minor. So even if the girl is 17, right? So like if it's uh, My Hero Academia type of thing, Saran Kagura shit, no, not, not on Steam. You can have it, but somewhere else, not on Steam. And people were like, oh, well, I, mean, I mean, I guess that's reasonable, right? So we'll just put a disclaimer. All the girls in our game are 80 plus, 18 plus. Uh, and then the rules changed again. It's like, well, no, actually, even if all of your girls in the game, story-wise, are 18 plus, uh, if they look as if they're minors, uh, then we will ban our game. And people are like, oh, shit, all right, so now let's give them fat tits, uh, let, let's give them massive asses, because if they look like, I don't know, Saturn Kagura girls, then, well, that, that's a problem, right? So that's why every single game on Steam now, from the, in, uh, the um, that, that's rated M for mature or above, is going to have massive tits. Uh, because they, they will ban even games that aren't adult only. Like there was a game uh, which took place in a high school. All of the characters were adult, but it was the students fighting against demons and zombies. It was very violent. So so because of the violence, it got aimed for mature and Steam wouldn't allow it because it's like uh, violence with, with minors, with high schoolers. So it's Steam policy. That's why. Aim policy. And he also says, V, the D Dead by Daylight devs are not based at all. They actively pander to the LGBT community. It's weird yeah, that but... they didn't catch this then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like, people don't understand how video games are made. Um, everything is made separately, right? So, like, the, the company itself may pander to the LGBT community, but if the artist that got commissioned took the piss, then that's what happened, right? So, uh, the chances are, like, they're a small development team. And they, they just didn't think about it. Possibly. Let's see. Is that... I think that is everything. Right. Gosh, we will wrap it up there then. Thank you all very much for uh, watching. Thank you for your very generous donations as always. And thank you, V, for popping by. And thank you for having me. And we'll see you all again next week. Have a good night.
Oh, dry feed. Jack from Mass Effect. If she's not a tomboy, I don't know what is. Though, of course, Tali and Miranda were up there as well. Ah, Jack. Oh, that Jack. I liked her with hair. I hated her bald. Yeah, I don't. I don't like bald women. I'm sorry. Bald women, weird. Yeah. 